Welcome to my hardcore Minecraft world, where we are currently on day 2127. I've built a lot of stuff since day 1000, and today, you're gonna get to see all of that. So sit back and relax and enjoy the next 1000 days. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and leave a like on this video. Also, if you don't have time to watch the full thing, if you could just leave this on in the background while you're doing other stuff, that really helps me out. Thanks very much. Enjoy. Now, although I am very happy with this tree, there are still a few things I want to change around the base of said tree because there's a lot of things wrong with it. Like this, and this, and this, and this. So obviously we want to fix those by doing a bit of terraforming. I've got a fair amount of grass and dirt, but we have to gather some other stuff as well. And those things were some stone, which I went into my beacon mine here to gather a load of, plus some grass, which I just destroyed a field. I also got some tuff from this little tuff patch here, and finally some acacia wood, baby. And apart from a bit of andesite, that is it. Let's make this tree base have a new face. That doesn't work. Let's just get building. I always underestimate how long it's going to terraform stuff. Like, I thought this would take, you know, 30 minutes. It took me two and a half hours to do all this. I also didn't gather enough grass, so I had to stop at one point and go get myself a load of grass. But we also used that stone, that turf, and that acacia to make this cliffside here. I really wanted to do some texturing in here, so I used the acacia for that, and I think it turned out rather nicely. What didn't happen that was nice, though, was me checking my ender chest and this creeper blowing up and nearly killing me. It took me down to four hearts. Luckily, I'm big and strong, and I survived, though. And we move on to live another day and add some leaves on to our lovely cliffside. And there you have it. I'm very happy with how this has turned out. We've got all these different levels over here to build stuff on. We've also got our cliffside, and I've really tried to do some like different type of shading to what I normally do, like placing all this darker wood and tough in the shadows to give it like, you know, a bit of depth, and I think it's turned out really nicely. But before we get building anything here, I want to link it up to my area over there, and I know just the way to do it, of course. It's a bridge. First, though, I had to make a pathway through our ugly farms for something to the bridge to link up to. Now, after building the path, I actually decided I was going to stream myself building the bridge and collecting all the materials. And, and I completely forgot to record any of me collecting the actual materials. But it's all there on stream if you want to go watch it. And if you don't, here is me forgetting to turn the stream off at the end and laughing at my own video. Chat, before you go, should we have McDonald's? We've got someone at the door, chat. We need to go. I'm going to end the stream now. Goodbye. Yeah, that was embarrassing. But anyway, we built a bridge. Now this time lapse will skip around a little bit as I kept forgetting to pause the time lapse and then mess stuff up. But look, we built a bridge. And there you go, a bridge over the river. I'm very happy with this. I think it looks rather nice. It's very red and bricky, but I think that's going to blend in with some of the stuff we're going to build up here. And also, I'm going to extend these poppy fields at some point down and do some more stuff over here. So the reds go nicely. And Lizzie, after the stream, said, Joel, are you ever going to use this bridge? And to prove I'm going to use this bridge, here is me using the bridge. Here it is. The whole bridge has been used. And now we will just fly past it and never use it again. But it looks cool and it adds to the immersion. Anyway, it's time to start working on beyond the bridge over here and what we're going to build here. Now, I'm still a bit unsure about what to put here exactly, but what I know I want to build for certain is a panda reserve. We haven't really gathered that many animals since, you know, our donkey and our cats at the start, and I want to turn this place into somewhere to put a load of pandas. But obviously, we need to keep these pandas contained as they will most likely try and escape. So, we're going to start off by building some walls and a gate and some rivers. Oh my gosh, look at these epic time lapses with all these epic material gathering bits. And oh look, a magic shulker box. You spin around it and whoa, when you reopen it again, look, it's got stuff in it. Oh, time for some more magic mangrove gathering epic. Wow, that was really epic. And that's all I need. Why are there so many pigs and cows here? 
That's better. Let's get building. Another time lapse, which took a bit longer than I was expecting it to take because placing these rivers in was quite awkward and stuff. But as you can see here, we've got loads of rivers coming down from one water source at the top. We then added in these walls plus some gates on these walls to link up between the multiple areas. You know your projects are getting way too big when you spent 50 days already in one video and you're just reaching the five minute mark. We're averaging 10 days a minute at the moment, but look, our gated panda enclosure. So this thing should be completely panda proof. I'm pretty sure the pandas won't be able to drown, like maybe might be able to here? I don't know. I think the water would push them along so they don't drown. I don't know how stupid pandas are. But what I do know is that they can't escape. There's no way out. Like, apart from maybe there. Have I, have I messed up? Maybe just that. There we go. They definitely can't escape out of there. But the rest of it is completely spawn proof. No baby pandas getting in there either. Can't get over here. Can't get over here. There's nowhere for them to escape. Like they, they can't get through this, this wall, I'm hoping. I guess we're going to find out as we're going to go look for some pandas now because we are going to build some other stuff in here. There's a few buildings going in and we're going to do some decorating, make it look a bit more pandery. If, if that's a real thing. But I want to get breeding the pandas as we go along. So, Operation Get Pandas is a go. Now, I know for a fact where a bamboo jungle is. However, I'm not sure if there's any pandas there. I guess we're going to find out. I've got my cherry boats here to bring them home in if I find them. This first bamboo jungle, no pandas. The second bamboo jungle, no pandas. The third bamboo jungle, panda. Hello. Get in the boat. Thank you. Any more? Two pandas. Perfect. Whoa, there's loads. Get me a boat. Oh, there's a cute one here. Look at it. It's one of the playful ones. Okay. Sorry. I'm going to have to get this one. Get on my bamboo raft. Lovely. All right. Let's go. 40 minutes of carrying pandas later. And we have two pandas here, but we still need to get them up there. I think we're going to have to improvise. So what we're going to do is we're going to use some soul sand here and grab some dirt as well. And then grab some gates as well. And then let's get building a tower here. As yes, we're making a big old water elevator. Get these guys to the right level. And then extending it over to the enclosure where we can hopefully get the pandas out of the boats. I can't remember if you can actually break boats with pandas in it. I know you can kill them quite easily as they've got such big old bodies. But I guess there's only one way to find out. Ah, okay. It's fine because there's water underneath. It's fine. Everything's fine. Okay, all we need to do now is add in some kelp so that this thing works. I was just about to speak sleep, but look how good the bridge looks with the moon rising above it. It's a shame the cherry tree is not loaded in right now. All right, let's hope this works. I'm, I'm nervous I'm just going to drown the pandas. All right, guys, let's go on a little adventure. No. Okay. No. Yep. We're all good. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Get on the raft. Uh-oh. <laughs> um, yes. Let me give you a little nudge. Nudge onto the raft. Yeah. Okay. And then if we just go down here and plop. Can I destroy the raft? I can. Yes. Okay. Success. Time for panda number two. Please don't die. It's a 20 minute journey to get another one. Go. And straight out the other side. Yes. We did it. Oh. Kind of. I'm kind of glitched at the moment. Uh-oh. Imagine that's how I die. And down. Boo! And break the boat. Look at these lazy guys. Let's put some bamboo around. As I think they need bamboo to be able to breed. Enter them into love mode. I didn't like that. Maybe there's not enough bamboo around. Oh, wait. Hang on. Yes. Look at that. It's a sneezing one. Cute. All right. We've got our pandas. Let's get rid of this. And it's all gone. We've got our first pandas in the panda sanctuary. Oh, it's going to be so good. As soon as they don't hide down there, it'll be great as well. Come on, guys. There's a whole sanctuary up here. Anyway, time to build some buildings. As that's right, it's panda building time. 
Why do I keep saying weird stuff? I don't know. Let's just collect some materials, shall we? Just kidding. I actually had pretty much everything. I just had to craft it all. So let's get building the building. And here you can see the style of building I'm going for. It's not a usual style I build in, but I think it turned out really well. I love the roofs. I love the colors. Lots of different stuff than usual. Lovely. You can kind of see the style we're going for over here. But how are the pandas doing? Oh my gosh, they've grown up already. Breed again for me, pandas. Thank you. So yeah, obviously it's not linked up to anything yet, but we can see the building here. It's just somewhere for the pandas to get a bit of shade, you know? Somewhere nice for them to chill out. Not that they care because they are all literally down here and haven't even attempted to get up the hill yet. Come on, guys. Stop rolling down the hill. Let me see if I can push one up. No. Maybe they'll follow the bamboo. No. What are you doing? You're so stupid. Come on. Okay, this one here can climb up blocks. Don't know what the other two are doing. Let's just lure this one up here. Okay, it's good to know that they actually do come up the hills. Anyway, I'm going to go gather the materials off camera like a classic YouTuber for the next two buildings all in one. And then let's get building. The reason I didn't show me gathering the materials is because I had most of them. I just had to put them in a shulker box and bring them over here. But you can see we're doing a tall skinny build here, which I'm very happy with. It's very different to the other build. And then this one has a slightly different color palette and it's also on stilt, meaning the pandas are going to have to walk up this little path to get to it. And as you can see, the roof is slightly different. I've also realized what a mistake I've made choosing pandas as the first animal to build an enclosure for, as these things are the laziest thing you'll ever see. And annoyingly, you just can't push them up hills and they just sit there on their backs and look at you really cutely and they're just annoying come on move follow me make it up the step okay i found a new way to push them up i can use this slab to brute force and push them come on stupid panda there we go and then come with me come on Come get the bamboo, you stupid panda. Apologies if I'm getting too angry at the pandas. Oh, stop lying on your back. Okay, come on. There's a little friend here. Breed with him. Breed with a panda. Yes. Okay, and now stay up here. Anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah, the new building. So as you can see, we've got this one here, which I really love. I think that's turned out very cool. I especially love these new pots. I forgot that you don't actually need the pattern and you can just make them out of bricks and I think they look awesome. I really like how they're a little bit skinnier than these blocks here so they make a really cool transition. And this build here, as I said, the roof is a slight different colour using more mangrove on the roof. Uh, but it's kind of like really like zen up here. Look at this. Very, very zen for the pandas who I honestly don't need more zen. But what they do need is a better environment as at the moment it's just lots of grass. Lots of grass. And I want to change that. Add in some bamboo, add in some other stuff. Let's go gather some materials. Please don't drown in the water, by the way, baby panda. Thank you. Okay, cool. I didn't need a specific amount of anything for this as I was just improvising. So I got myself some spruce. I fixed up my hoe and then I went and got some moss and then I made some coarse dirt for some paths. Got myself some cobblestone to make some mossy cobblestone and then I also went and got some podzil plus finally some lily pads and on the way back from the lily pads I picked up some pink and white tulips. And that's it. Wonderful. It's time to give this place a bit of a transformation. Gosh, I love that cherry tree. I love it so much. I just turn around and see it sometimes and I'm like, oh. You are beautiful. You are everything. Anyway, let's make this panda sanctuary feel a bit more homely. And we're going to try and breed up these pandas as we go along, as we do have a lot of bamboo in one of these. Here it is. If you didn't see me collect this, that's because it came from my bamboo farm. Give me a baby. So slow. Yes. Have a little snack, fella. Have a little snack, you too, as well. Go on. Grow up quicker because of this bamboo I'm giving you. Time to once again terraform this area for the, the third time now. First the grass, then the water. Now I'm, I'm taking away some more of the grass. Let's go. So we started out by making a little pathway through this place. Also, it's so cute watching the pandas wander around, apart from that one that's just sat on its back the entire time. And after the path, we added in some podzel, some moss, and some like mossy cobblestone, as well as some sugarcane and some lily pads. And then we finished it off with some flowers and some bamboo. And look at this. Wouldn't you say this is a luxurious panda enclosure? Man, I would want to live here. It looks like a haven. 
Oh my gosh, got some little bridges over the water. Got this cute little area here, which, oops, shouldn't have any shulker boxes in because pandas don't need shulker boxes. And then we've got this lovely little area over here. You can see we've got some sneezing pandas. Where are you? Look at him. Look at him. We've been breeding these guys up. Uh, one did suffocate under a lily pad, which is probably going to happen when they're a baby. I'm just going to feed them a load of bamboo so they grow up really quickly. Luckily, I've got lots and lots and lots and lots of bamboo. And obviously, this thing isn't finished just yet, but the sun is going down quick. Let's do an amazing shaders run through. Oh my gosh, look at it all. It's got the cherry tree in the background. It's got the pandas. It's got everything you'd ever want in a panda enclosure. Now, weirdly enough, this isn't what I set out to do today. I was going to do something else in this video, but I got a bit obsessed with the panda enclosure. You can see we've got lots more space under this tree here. What do you think I should put here? Let me know in the comments down below. I was thinking maybe a village, but I want to hear your input, okay? Also, I just want to say I've had this bamboo farm here for ages. It's not very big, but it produces a lot of bamboo because I don't really ever use bamboo. But now I have a use for bamboo. I want to get a brown panda in the future. We're not going to get one today because they're quite rare. But I'm going to come over here every so often, especially when I'm working on this part next time, and breed these guys up. They are so cute, and I want more of them. Unless I get a brown panda right now. Come on, snotty nose guy and normal guy. No, you're not brown panda. Oh, well, it's worth a try. Eat my bamboo and grow up quickly. How about you guys? You make me a brown panda? <gasps> no. Well, there you have it, guys. The panda enclosure is complete. I'm so happy with this. I think it's really cool to get some more life into our world. This area over here has two farms, and they are both ugly, and I hate them. And also these empty fields, and it just doesn't fit in with the surrounding area. So we're going to fix that by placing some buildings down and also doing some decorating. This is going to be a long distraction, which I don't want the video to be focused on. So let's get all the materials we need for the first building by showing you one second of each material gathered. I realized after saying that that one second is quite a lot as I got 18 different clips here of me gathering materials so that's 18 seconds. I want it to be more like five seconds so we'll change that up in the future. But anyway here you can see me gathering all the materials I need for this first build which is a slightly smaller build and 18 seconds later we have all that we need. And whilst we build this building around it I thought I'd let the farm run so we can get some bone mill for the future. And I went for this sort of jungly green palette to match the nearby city and I'm very happy with how it turned Turned out. Ah, that looks much better. I'm really liking the roof here. It looks very cool, very overgrown because obviously it's making a load of moss in there. So I use a bit of moss all over the build. And we've also got these bones leading us to the chest here where, by the way, we're getting a lot of bone meal. But that is actually the small build as although this is a smaller farm, uh, because of the TNT, it needs a bigger area around it. So, so we're going to take inspiration from our city here. And we're going to build something that matches, kind of. But first, we need some materials and uh, a lot more this time. So we'll do half a second instead. So this time, you only get eight seconds of materials being gathered. In fact, I actually gathered more materials than last time, but this time lapse is a lot quicker. It's not even a time lapse. What am I saying? So we have everything we need for this build now as well. Unfortunately, our sniffer friend here is in the way. So we're going to put him on a lead and then move his pen. He can come over here for now. What is he doing? Oh, is he sniffing something up? <gasps> okay, we've got some torch flower seeds. Those are the first I've got. I've not actually been around while he's been sniffing so far. Yeah, yeah they're kind of cute. Hopefully we'll get some more as we move into another time lapse to cover up this ugly dark oak farm. Now I thought a circular build would fit this dark oak farm well and I tested it and of course it doesn't blow up any of the blocks we've placed which is good. We also use some of the new bamboo blocks in here. You'll see them a little bit in one of the circle rings there which I really quite like. I think they look quite cool and I'm very happy with the end product. It's looking nice but we need to finish off more of this area and we're going to start with this area here. All this grass needs to be changed. First, let's place some walls and some lamps around this path all the way down to the bridge. And let's head into this valley here, light up all the dark spots and then get filling it in with some grass and dirt. And then we're going to place down a load of water 
And we made this sort of river slash bay here, ending in a waterfall, covering up the cave. I then went and got a load of poppies from my iron farm, and we got placing them everywhere, extending our poppy field through rain, on cliffs, by the river, by our two new buildings, by the waterfall, until finally we placed our last poppy. But we're not done yet. I killed some iron golems here to clear up this area a little bit. I know they'll respawn, but just for now, I wanted to kill some. I then placed down some rocks in the area where these iron golems once lived, and started terraforming this world using some moss plus some podsel as well as some other different items to make this place look a bit more you know fun I guess you could say finishing off with some lilacs for a bit of color and then obviously loads and loads of bamboo and then finally using some of the bone mill from our bone mill farm to add some grass in and as you can see this area has come along a lot. Look at it. Oh my gosh, it looks so much better than the farms that were there before. It's kind of crazy how just, you know, changing the landscape a little bit can really add to your Minecraft world. Look at this place. It's looking really good. The bamboo, of course, has to grow a bit more till it's up to full height. But it's really nice just to walk through this place. It's lovely, isn't it, Mr. Sniffer? Have you got any more treats for us? No, I don't think he does. But speaking of the sniff, that brings us on to our main project today, the hotel. And for this, we're going to need a lot of planning. So let me take you a bit through the process. Now, we're only having friendly slash passive mobs in this hotel. We don't want those angry mobs like pillagers upsetting the other animals. And if my calculations are correct, that leaves us 20 mobs as we're going to leave out cows and sheep as we already have them. Which means this hotel is going to be pretty big. Also, as this hotel is on land we're not going to be including any water mobs and we're not including any never mobs because lava is bad for burning stuff now we're going to design this thing in the reverse order i normally would do by starting with the interior and the first thing i want is a big foyer don't know how we're going to decorate it yet but, but it's going to be big and we want this foyer to be grand with big ceilings so let's go up to about there shall we now let's think about the layout i think i want a grand staircase at the back here but we're probably going to want some other staircases on the sides as well so here is the foyer layout as you can see we've got a second level here the rooms are going to be off the sides of all these sections. Yes, even on the ground floor. We've also got these two elevator shafts here, which is going to be water elevators, as well as the grand staircase, which will be stairs taking you up over here. But now we need to talk about the rooms as each room is going to be a different size. As for example, an LA doesn't need as much space as a camel. Now we have 10 big animals and 10 small animals, meaning we can spread this out fairly evenly. So let's get laying out these rooms. And here is the completed layout. So on each floor, we've got three small rooms and two big rooms. This is completely mirrored on the other side because I wanted this thing to be symmetrical as I think it would look quite cool and grand from the front. And on the top floor, we've got some more rooms here. We've got one sort of medium sized room, two very small rooms here. These are going to be for the chickens, frogs, a lay, parrot maybe. But these ones are extra small, and then we've got two big ones on the top. And these all have balconies as well, if you look. So these all have little balconies where you can come outside. But the layout is done. Now I have to do the hard task of actually building the thing. But I'm not going to show you this process, as it's going to take a long time. And I want you to see it in survival. Back in a lot of hours. Well, I knew it'd take a long time, but two days later, two real life days... We have the design ready and we're going to build it right over here. Yes, this space here is perfect for it. It's got this nice river out front, which leads to the rest of our area. And this thing is massive. I've, I've moved it from over there where you saw me designing it to here because it, it just looks better. So now all we need to do is gather all the materials and do some terraforming and build it and then gather all the animals. Oh gosh, that's a lot. Why did I choose the start of this video to do some decorating over there? This is a long video. Guess we better get started with those materials and we got to do it in a certain order. Now I need 3,318 cut blocks of copper and also 1,533 cut slabs of copper. This is 1,022 copper blocks, which is 9,198 or AKA 144 stacks. We've got to gather 144 stacks 
of all. Yes, you heard me right. So, of course, we set out into the world and we got mining. We got one shulker. We got two shulker. And you guessed it. What's next? That's right, three shulkers. And then we got the fourth shulker and the fifth shulker and then half a shulker. And that's all we need. Then let's gather some coal and some cobblestone to make some furnaces as that's right, we need to smelt all this copper and I don't have a super smelter. And whilst it all smelts, let's use our wood farm for a bit as we're going to be needing some birch a bit later on. Now we can mine up all the furnaces to collect all the copper and craft it into some copper blocks. This was a lot of copper. And we want it to oxidize before we get building. So I got spreading it out across the world. And we spent around 15 minutes laying out a load of copper. And you're probably thinking, wow, that's a long time, Joel. At least you've got them all oxidizing now. Wrong. I I've not even put half of them down, I'm pretty sure. I'm going to take a break and collect something else. And that thing we're collecting? Sandstone. Very easy to collect with a efficiency 5 pickaxe. And I found a really good spot to collect a load without the sand getting in the way. As you can see, I've crafted a load of the sandstone into these here. But we've still got all this, which we need to smelt. Time to get the furnaces back out again. And I didn't show this the first time, but I separated every stack of coal into stacks of 8. Placed 8 in every furnace. And then also had to place in a stack of sandstone as well. Dear gosh, I really need to get a super smelt. Melter. Guess I probably should get placing more copper. I think this is a lot of copper. I I'm pretty sure if you were to ask how much this is, you would say a lot. And I've also already collected one and a half stacks of it. At least it's done now. And the next lot of materials are a lot easier to gather. Let's start by fixing up my pickaxe and harvesting this sandstone. And then I spent about two days AFKing my birch wood farm and I managed to get a lot of birch planks and a lot of birch logs. But it's not enough still. We need to craft ourselves some birch slabs, some birch stairs and some birch trap doors. Oh, and also some fence gates and some fences. Next up on our list of things we need is some bamboo blocks. I want lots of blocks of bamboo as we're going to be using bamboo planks. I didn't have enough in my farm, so I had to go to the jungle and start smashing a load of bamboo with our sword, which is the first time my swords ever actually really had any durability loss. But here you can see a lot of bamboo planks, but we also need some bamboo logs and some bamboo fences and some stripped bamboo blocks as well. After we had all the bamboo collected, I went to this little hole I made underneath the oxidizing copper and got collecting a load of moss. This took a few days, but we got all the moss we need which was a lot of moss. I then spent the next few days crafting up a few other small little items and then some other big items like terracotta and also smelting some sand for some glass, making some concrete powder, some different types of concrete powder, some jungle trap doors, some concrete, and then I got collecting some of my oxidized copper, which took a long time and it's still nowhere near all done. But I collected all I could and now we have to wait for the rest to oxidize. I then went and chopped down some spruce trees, got myself some spruce planks, made myself some stained glass, collected some sand for some more stained glass and concrete powder later. I also went and got some mangrove saplings or whatever they're called, proper ghouls I think, and got myself a load of mangrove wood which we're going to be building with. I then collected some more oxidized copper and also did some trading with some villagers to get myself a load of bricks. Now let's head to the mesa and collect myself a load of terracotta, which is always very fun with this beacon here, and then we converted it into some white terracotta. I then went and got myself some some honey because I'm going to be building with some honey blocks. I also put down a full beacon here and got mining myself a load of granite and some andesite down below. We went to the nether and we collected some warped wood, some glowstone and oh my gosh are we done? Goodness gracious me. We are on day 1237. Uh, this is the most materials I think I've gathered so far for this world. Even more so maybe than the cherry tree? I don't know. We have so many different type of materials though that this definitely took longer to gather because look, just look at it. We're not even done with the oxidized cut copper slabs either. Like, we still need to wait for a lot of this to oxidize. I've been just collecting it as I come to the area, but it's taking its sweet time. Especially these ones over here as they're a bit further away, unfortunately. I don't really want to add up the amount of hours it's taken to gather all this. But here's the replay recordings. Y you can add it up if you want. I don't want to. It's a long time. That's all I know. But at least it's time to get building. And there's actually one material I didn't get, which was just some grass to do a bit of terraforming around the base of this thing. But let's get this thing built, shall we? This is going to be a long time lapse. Let's see if it takes longer than gathering the materials. I highly doubt it. Talk about fate. Famous last words. I highly doubt it, he says. 11 hours later. Yes, you heard me right. 
This build took me 11 straight hours. Every time you see the sun go down, that's 10 minutes of real life time. But as you can see, we've got this sort of brick bottom layer here with some steps up to the front of the hotel and then we've chosen sandstone and birch for the main blocks i really really like this build palette i think it turned out looking really nice we've also put moss on all of the floors by the way and we've used white terracotta for the ceiling which is why you can see the white terracotta on the other side there that's in the hotel rooms themselves in the central lobby you can see we've used a mix of woods mangroves etc to make a fancy floor for the lobby we've also got lots of honey blocks and different kind of cool colors thrown in there as well bamboo is one of the main ones because i just really like how this new bamboo texture looks we of course use copper for the roof as you can see by all the copper blocks we gathered earlier i actually moved them over you can see them behind on the bottom right hand corner there that's all the copper blocks oxidizing as where they were placed was too far away and they weren't like loading in because of the chunks or whatever but we started this build on day 12 37 so you can see already we're about to pass the 60 day mark but we added a final dome roof on the top with some glass and the build was complete goodness gracious me what a long time lapse 11 hours to be precise here are the recordings i took with replay mod there oh, i don't want to build anymore and luckily i don't really have to this thing is massive like seriously massive the biggest building we've got on the server so far by quite a long shot, I'd say. And I'm really happy with how it's turned out. I think it looks amazing, especially if you stand over here, as it's kind of centered in this bay here and looks really, really cool. Obviously, in the future, I want to do some terraforming around it, make it look a bit, you know, neater and nicer and link it up to some pathways and stuff. But let me give you a quick tour inside. The main foyer, as you can see here, we've got some chandeliers coming down from the ceiling. We've got a little reception area to check in here, plus a little seating area where you can, you know, have some coffee, I guess, although it's only animals staying in here, so that doesn't really make any sense. We've got the grand staircase over here, which leads up to this massive window where you can look outside and see horses and chickens and sheep. They'll be coming in here soon. And then we've got this big old upper floor with this balcony across the middle and the big dome roof as well. The rooms on the top floor all have little balconies and stuff, so the animals can come outside and look at a half loaded in cherry tree and these rooms are all different shapes and sizes and only the top floor has balconies i haven't actually done the water elevators yet i'll do those shortly after i didn't have any kelp but the bottom floor has a load of rooms as well it's mirrored on both sides we've got some little rooms down here we've got one big room down here and then we've got another big room coming off the center down here and this hotel i'm going to call the ark that's what the a's up there stand for hotel ark because we're going to get two of every animal and when are we going to get them well right now now i'm going to decorate each room individually to meet the needs of each animal and we're also going to label each room as well so on day 1300 we're going to start off with our two chickens let's go fellas and while we're leading these two back, I'll explain the idea behind this hotel. So if I ever want to breed a lot of a certain animal in the future, say chickens for like eggs or feathers, etc., I can come to the hotel, breed these guys together a couple of times, and then take their children off to wherever I need them. These two will stay in the hotel though. Don't worry guys, you don't have to check in, I've already done it for you. So this is their room here if you'd like to come in lovely thank you very much we've got a nice little chicken coop for them i was gonna bone mill the ground a little bit oh it just destroyed my cost dirt oops please enjoy your stay feel free to use any of the amenities downstairs let's go get our next guests actually before the next guests arrive let's make sure we've got ourselves a working elevator system as you can tell we're starting off with the simple animals as our next guest ah the pigs here this lovely couple will be staying in the ground floor in one of our private suites come on you silly come on it's getting night time you need to get to your bed if you'd like to follow me sir madame into here please after you no after you no after you come on stupid I thought you were meant to be intelligent animals oh you are dumb all right you go all the way over there and then you come come let's go 
had to dismantle the hotel for them. Let me just test out the beds. You guys are gonna love this room. Feel free to explore a little. You've got some feeding trough over here. You've got your beds. You've even got this lovely pig portrait. Enjoy your stay at the Ark Hotel. I've just done something very, very stupid. You may have noticed the day count has just gone up by quite a lot. Well, that's because I uh, I went out for food with my wife and I thought I closed the game like this. This pauses the game for me. But what I actually did was this and I left the chat open and I did that for an hour and 53 minutes. So I was just stood there, vulnerable. But luckily, I didn't die. The most annoying part is I could have AFK'd somewhere good where my farms would be work. <gasps> How long has that been there? No. Was that just... I was... I was right. Well, there's our luck gone forever. Also, why is there a block missing up there? Has that always been missing? Was that missing earlier? Now it's fixed. Anyway, on to the next animal. Now there's three horse type animals. Of course, we've got donkeys, horses themselves, and also mules. So we're going to start by breeding up a mule here. I think I can use golden carrots, right? Make me a mule berry and horse person. Nice. I can't for the life of me find another donkey. However, I've been searching all the nearby biomes. There's so many stupid horses, but no donkeys. Gonna have to go quite far out, I think. Oh my gosh, finally. And oh, of course, there's two. Have some apples. Sorry, baby, but you're gonna have to be left behind. I'm taking your mama home. That's cruel to leave the baby all alone. Now they're no longer alone. We'll leave this donkey here to be checked in while we wait for the other mules to be bred up. Look what I've just spied right next to my area. Blooming donkey. What are you doing up here, fella? But I found our next hotel guests, some goats. Can I fly with people on a lead? Is that possible? What happens? Do they just snap? Yeah, it just snapped. I thought it might. Guess we're walking these fellas home. This is gonna take some time. I have a feeling. Welcome Goat 1 and Goat 2 to the Ark Hotel. So let's get our two bouncy fellas into their room down here. Hopefully they can make it through the door. Come on. Yes, better and smarter than the pigs. Welcome goats to your room. Give me your leads back. Thank you very much. You can jump around for joy all on this mountainous room as much as you like. Have fun. Goodbye. Let's also make ourselves our other mule. Let's speed things up by getting some of the easier and more boring animals out of the way. And those boring animals include the donkey, which I took over to the hotel and made a little room for. The donkey room. Oh, the donkeys love it in here, don't you, Berry? Yeah, they do. The next boring animal on the route is some wolves, which we already have, so I thought I'd just do a little bit of decorating before I went and grabbed them from over by our farming area, and then let's bring them into the hotel. Welcome, guys. Enjoy your stay. Frank and Grandmaster Feces Finder Extraordinaire 3261. I hope you have a good time here. Next up is horses, which is another boring animal, which is very similar to the donkeys and the mules, which you'll see a bit later. All these rooms are very similar for them. I just wanted to put hay bales and water down for them, just some random them stuff. I also decorated the ceiling in here and went and got one horse which I already had and another horse as well and led them to the room for where they will stay. I then went and decorated another room this time for the mule and as you can see very very similar. Although I did add some lilacs in because I thought that's fun. Maybe mules like lilacs. We tamed them up and then we took the mules over to the hotel as well. Mules done. God these animals are boring. Let's get something more fun. And for that, we're heading to the jungle to find an animal we haven't found before. And that animal is the parrot. We got a blue parrot here, and then we found a light blue parrot as well, and we took them home. Look, I was actually flying with them for a while until they fell off like stupid idiots, and I had to go get them. But we made our way to the hotel with them, built them a little pen with some little places for them to perch, some jungle leaves, and some bamboo to remind them of home. We also put some string on top of the bamboo so it wouldn't grow, placed down some grass, then brought them in and put them on the perches, and they were very happy in there. Trust me, they told me so. Next animal, we're moving on to the fox. I looked through this nearby tiger biome but couldn't find any so I had to go to another tiger biome where I did find some. I managed to wrangle them with some sweet berries and my leads and got them 
hooked up to take home. But unfortunately, foxes are really annoying to pull, so I decided to take them one at a time by using some boats. So first we took fox number one, who was a bit of a pest and kept attacking chickens, but we got him to reception where he stayed and we gave him some sweet berries so that he would give us our lead back because he kept stealing them. I then went and got the other fox, decorated up their room to look a bit more like a tiger by him, and then brought them in, and I also actually gave them name tags of Foxy Man and Foxy Lady. Next up, let's fly off to a mushroom island to collect ourselves some mushroom cows, which I led back fairly easily. These guys are pretty friendly. I also made their room out of mycelium, which I also placed some mushroom lamps in, as well as some actual mushrooms, and then I led them home where they were very happy. They told me also. And then now let's kill some salmon, get ourselves some cats, because these guys are fairly easy and boring to get. Managed to find two in this acacia jungle, built in this little room here. They seem happy. All good. Next animal. And the next animal is not really an animal. It is a golem, the iron golem. And we built in this weird room here, then we just built some, like, iron golems, and we said done with it. Quite a boring room, but iron golems are quite boring. These guys aren't boring, though. These are frogs, and we definitely will be using these guys in the future to do some frog-like farms, but for now, we got these two tadpoles, and we brought them home, and we got building them a very swampy room with some lily pads, lots of cute decorations, and just flowers and stuff, just to make it look nice for them. And after waiting a bit of time, they grew up, and now we have two frogs. Lovely. Now, the next animal may look cute, but is the worst animal in Minecraft by far, because, oh my gosh, these guys are the most fragile little beings ever. Look, this blooming rabbit died. I was so angry, because they're just so stupid. I actually punched the ground here. But it's no worries, because I saved another rabbit earlier, which I can actually bring over. And all we have to do is find another rabbit, which is fairly easy, and oh, it's died again. Gosh, these things are stupid. But no worries, we managed to find another rabbit pretty close by, and I was very careful this time, making sure it could climb up every little thing, using some slabs, in fact, to make sure it would climb up, because these things have got the worst pathing ever. But we managed to struggle through, made all the way over here, and it's died again. I, I hate these things. So... Desperate measures, we went to a nearby tiger, we found a rabbit, and we kept that thing in a boat. We made it all the way through this like really long-winded path, got it up to the front of the hotel, and we managed to get it in nice and safely. I went looking for another rabbit in the tiger, spent about 20 minutes, couldn't find one. So I headed off to this desert over here, which I thought would be quite easier to find rabbits. And look, two rabbits, nice. Just a shame they're really far away, about 3,000 blocks. But we got boating our way, and we managed to take these rabbits all the way home, led it to here, and we managed to breed them as well, just in case one of these idiots died for whatever reason. I then very unenthusiastically decorated their room because I hate these guys. I made one desert section and I made one sort of grassy section and I brought them in. And to be honest, I hope I never see these guys again. I hate them. Now that ordeal is over, it's time to get one of the trickier mobs. If we look over the top of here, it's Woodland Mansion time. I haven't even attempted a Woodland Mansion yet, but we need an allay which are inside these things. So it's time to whip out the chest piece, which hasn't been whipped out in a while. I feel pretty safe with this stuff on, but still, I'm quite nervous. I've not done anything dangerous in a while. Ooh, Vex armor trim. Ooh, another one. I'm not gonna lie, the noises in here are terrifying. <laughs> and these guys are terrifying as well. But, oh, okay, they only do half a half damage. That's not too bad. Okay, our first vexes. Go away. Out. Kill these guys. Pretty easy. Got my first totem of undying. Lovely. I'll put that in my inventory now. All right. Up to the final floor. And it looks like this woodland mansion has no allays in it, which is a shame. Lots of mobs down there, though. Well, that's a shame. I was hoping to find some allays in there. We'll just have to go to an outpost instead. And I believe I know where one is. Aha! Now, does this have any allays? Nope. Cool. Let's look for another one, I guess. Oh, we have a cage. No. How about the... No. Oh, there's another one right there. No allays. Wow, that's lucky. Like, look, there's three in viewing distance. That's kind of crazy. Now, all we need is there to be a lay. Oh, my gosh. I'm just really unlucky. There's got to be some in here. No, please. Are you joking? Oh, and it's... Uh-oh. Please. Yes, I see them. Okay. Sorry, guys. Get out my way. Allays to be saved. Let's get out of here. Now I'm about 2,000 blocks away, so please say I can fly. No. Oh, I'm going to have to carry these back across land. 
This is going to be a long journey. And it was, as these guys you think would be easy to pull because they fly, but no, they kept getting stuck on absolutely everything. But we got making them a little room, and for some reason I thought, LA's like caves, right? So I made them a like, sort of cavey looking mossy room. I don't know if they like it, but we led them in there, and they didn't really seem to complain because they're Minecraft mobs and they don't actually have an actual personality. Anyway, next mob, we flew off towards a desert where we found a camel. I've never seen one of these in-game before. It is really cool. It sort of wobbles quite funny. I got dragging it along behind me and this boat and realized, oh, I need two. So I left it on this little island here, went back to another desert village, found another camel and dragged that one all the way back over to the island until we had two camels, which after a long time, we arrived at the hotel with them. And I hate just traveling with animals now. I'm getting sick of animals, but I made them a very nice enclosure with lots of like deserty rocks and stuff. Nearly died getting them in the room, but we managed to get them in eventually and look how happy they are. I I I'm taking the saddle though because I literally only have one. It's a, it's a real pain. The next animal, it was quite close by in the acacia biome just behind my base. We managed to get two llamas fairly easy and drag them back and these guys are really good at being on the lead. Like rabbits, you could learn a thing or two from these guys. And they decided to time lapse me building their room. I built a little mountain in the area. I also changed out the ground to be a bit more dirty and added in some bushes. And look how happy they are. Very happy, they told me. Anyway, off we go to the snowy biome where we're going to get some polar bears. I found this one but it had a cub so it started to attack me so I found two other polar bears and I got boat icing for a little bit which was really fun. I wish it was ice all the way back, but it's not. And I had to painfully take these guys about 3,000 blocks because that's just where everything is. My place is in a really stupid place. But I completely converted their room to have lots of like snow and ice and stuff. And plus some pods, it'll just add a bit of detail. Got them in and I'm not sure if they're happy. They're polar bears. I'm not even going to say they are, okay? I don't know what they're thinking. Anyway, to the jungle where we're going to be looking for an ocelot. And these were honestly a massive pain. I found this first guy here, led him down here, left him on a fence while I went to look for another one. Came back and of course he's despawned. I didn't realize us lots did that but they do. So I got annoyed for a second, but then I went home, got myself some emeralds, got myself some name tags, and then went back looking for ocelots. And it took about 20 minutes to find this guy, but we found him and we name tagged him and we called him Flooper, because why? I, I don't know. We found another one as well. This one's a little baby making it a real pain to catch, but eventually we got our lead on it after a, a lot of struggle and it killing a chicken, and I named it Dummy because I'm, I'm just fed up at this point of animals and they're all dummies and floppers to me. Anyway, here's me arriving back dragging them in a boat which is just my go-to at the moment as it seems the best way to transport animals and I left them in the lobby while I got decorating their room using lots of jungle theme because you know these guys live in the jungle they love the jungle jungle leaves everywhere let's make it extra viney as well because why not I got them in the room eventually after them trying to run away and look they're happy I think what are they doing I don't know hotel arc is nearly complete we've only got one mob left to get and I know I can hear you all in the comments now saying, Joel, what about the pandas? What about the cows? What about the sheep? Well, I already have cows and sheep over here. And as for pandas, I've been breeding them up and I'm happy to say we've, we, we've got no short supply of pandas. I've been trying really hard to get a brown panda and I finally got one and somehow it's escaped. It can stay there because I think there's another one down here. Yep, there it is. Be free, brown panda. Be yourself. Anyway, the final mob we have to get is the sniffer. So let's go get ourselves some brushes and let's look for some warm ruins. I'm just going to search these. If it gives me a pottery shard or something I don't want, I'm leaving it. Is that one? Yes. Wait, move, 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 move. There's one. And there's number two. That took a little bit of time, but there we go. So now all we need to do is build them a room. So let's go through this moss, place down some pods hill, place down some grass for them to sniff and some pots we collected, plus some rocks and finally the sniffer eggs. Yo, oh, we're done. And just like that, the project is complete. Oh my gosh, this has been a long one. But look at this beast. Yes, the surrounding area hasn't been terraformed and looks a bit ugly, but look at it. It is a hotel of the ages. We started this project well over 200 days ago, and has it been worth it? In a way, yes, because now I can breed up multiple animals if I ever want to make like a pen for them elsewhere, or if I ever need them. And as a reward for a job well done, 
I'm killing this rabbit because I hate rabbits now. They are the worst. I'm just gonna throw its meat and hide away to just rot. Now I'm currently hiding in my massive hotel lobby because uh, it's raining outside and that's really sad. But once again, we're gonna completely ignore the goal of today's video to work on something else first. And that something else is this. Look at this hole. Look at this uneven terrain. Look at this other hole. What is all this? That's right. It's ugly. We've done a lot of work on this side, making sure everything is linked up nicely with beautiful paths heading along. But we haven't done anything on this side. This path just sort of comes to an end. We're going to start today by fixing that. So first, we're going to need a few things. Like a load of coarse dirt, a load of grass, a load of birch leaves, a load of mossy cobblestone. Actually, we need way more birch leaves. And then I'm going to collect a load of podzel. That should be plenty. And while we're here, we'll get some ferns. I then went and harvested some sugarcane and got some different stuff like buttons and leaves and gravel and a load of azure bluettes. I then AFK'd my bone mill farm for a while and as you can see we got a lot of bone mill. And after we got some spruce wood we got to work. We started off by getting rid of a bit of a mound there, adding in a pathway which we used a lot of coarse dirt for. I then got patching up a load of awkward holes and then added in a river going through, sort of winding through underneath part of the path where we added a bridge in and I also decorated the river with some podzel and some gravel and some mossy cobblestone plus those buttons and ferns we found earlier. And after putting the water in I put some sea pickles in as well and some sugarcane on the side. I then worked on this other part here by the bay where the river ends up by placing down some more podzel and mossy cobblestone to make it look nice, added in some trees and then we got using the birch leaves we had gathered to add some hedgerows around this place. But we're not done there. No, we're going to go bone mill some lilacs plus some peonies and then we're going to head and we're going to get placing these. The peonies first in a sort of diagonal pattern, then the lilacs as well in a straight line, making two huge flower fields. But we've got a couple more fields to fill, so we went and got some poppies from our iron farm and also some rose bushes in between those poppies. But look at it. It's looking marvellous. It's looking so pretty around here. But you may notice there's a weird little spot here. Well, we're going to build something here. So let's go gather some materials. And we're going to start off by using some of our masons in the nearby village to get ourselves a load of bricks with some emeralds. And we also got some other materials which you may recognize as they are very similar to the sort of theme we had going on with the mason village. And we also got some other weird stuff like cacti which you'll see us using later and finally some other little bits and bobs. And that is everything. But what are we going to be building? Well, you'll find out when I get building it, which is right. Please subscribe. Now, wow, what a subtle message. Did you get it? Oh, I hope you did. Please subscribe. Anyway, what are we building, you ask? That's right, it is a train station. A train station, Joel, but you can fly. I know, but it's for aesthetic purposes, like everything else in this world. Speaking of which, we went and collected a load of white tulips, and then we got placed in those in our final flower field. I'm kind of obsessed with how cute this area is looking. Look at it. Woo! I need to get some lights along here, though. I'm a bit worried at night mobs are going to spawn. But here is our train station. I'm very happy with this. Very cute little train station. And it's a functioning train station as well, although I need to add some some stuff in first. I forgot to add. Oops, where do I get to them? Let's make some minecarts. Five in this dispenser and five in this dispenser. So this thing is on a system where it is automatic. So if I press a button, a minecart shall appear. Hop in and off we go on a little adventure out to wherever the next train station is going to be in the future. Like I said earlier, we're going to have loads of these around. But say you're coming back the other way. Let's hop in and move quickly. This might be quite slow. Come on. Can you make it uphill by just pressing W? No. Okay, imagine you're coming along here. It knocks you off the minecart and it's not going to put you there. But heads down. Get stuck because I've, I've built it wrong. Heads down, gets hit by the cactus, collected in the hopper, straight back into the dispenser. So like I said in the time lapse, the plan in the future is to have some tunnels going underground, some going overground with bridges, maybe those bridges stretching across the water. And each train station is going to be themed around each area. So this one obviously matches the mangrove roof of our mason village. The next one maybe we'll build up here with our cherry tree. And speaking of said cherry tree and cherry tree area, we've got our panda sanctuary which is great 
But we also built this area up here. This area has been terraformed rather nicely, but it's just empty. There's nothing here. And we're going to change that. Now, a long, long time ago, I had a temporary villager breeder, and it's still there. It, it's just hiding under this bamboo forest over here. And I've actually been making some of these villagers into clerics, as you can see, and trading with them. Mainly for redstone, because I hate mining for it. But I want to get more clerics, mainly for the glowstone, but also for the bottles of enchanting. My Elytra breaks a lot, or gets close to breaking, which is not good in hardcore. So we're going to transform the cherry tree area into another village, like this one down here. So we're going to go through this building by building. Let's gather the materials for the first building. Whoa, did you see that? Oh, 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 he's a pro. Let's see how many of the materials we already have. Can we fill a shulker? Your boy's done good. Not only one, but two shulker boxes worth of materials just in our lovely chest system. But we also need a load of spruce wood. So we chopped down this tree. I also went and dyed my sheep purple and pink. And we got harvesting that purple and pink wool. What is it both for? Well, the purple's for some beds. And you'll see the pink in a second. We also got smelting some stuff, collected some flowering azalea leaves, made some pink banners from the pink wool, and finally some flower pots and some pink tulips. Now the pink banners, we're not going to leave pink. We're going to start with a white base gradient, then a pink bordure, then a white line down the middle, and finally a white chevron to make this funky design. Ooh, fun. And then I think we can just do this, right? Yeah, we get four of them. Lovely. And there we go. Everything we need to build our first building. So let's get to work. Now, I wanted to use lots of cherry wood in this village because we are under the cherry tree, of course. And honestly, it took me a while to come up with this design. Building with cherry wood's not so easy. Nothing really goes with it super well. I ended up going for this mossy, flowery roof here. Oh, lovely. Now to build the inside. And we're going to start by making a staircase up to the second floor and filling the floor in. Then placing some cherry logs in the middle just to separate the staircase. Then let's add in some shelves around, some little plants, maybe even a nice chair here. And we can also place in some brewing stands so that they get their job as a cleric. Plus, let's put some candles down. I don't really use candles often, but they're fun. A couple of decorated pots just for, well, decoration. And finally, some beds with some chests next to them because the clerics need to store their stuff somewhere. And obviously, they need to sleep so we can get more villagers. And there we go. A cute little house. Not a load of decoration, but I don't want to put too much stuff in as villagers get stuck on stuff a lot. In fact, there's been many times where I've come back to my mason village and they, they just get stuck on things like trap doors. Like that guy there, this guy here. I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to use trap doors in these builds. But anyway, time to gather the materials for building number two. And this house is a little bit smaller, so the materials didn't take long to gather at all. In fact, I had them once again. Oh, that storage system coming in useful. Time for another house. This one again is in a very sort of magical style. I like the other one. However, it's a little bit smaller, as you can see. Lots of pink cherry wood again, though, and a flatter roof. And once again, a very simple interior in this one. Although I might put a double chest here with some spruce doors and make a little wardrobe. Then let's put another shelf with some brewing stands, maybe a brewing stand there, crafting table, and finally a little flower in the corner. Lovely, very simple, but a funky floor. And I know by the way that none of these are linked up yet. We're gonna build the buildings first and link them up later. And this next building's a slightly different style to the two we've got going so far. And although this building isn't the biggest one we've built so far, it requires a lot of different materials. Obviously we got a lot of cherry wood in there, but we also have to go get some glass, trade with our villagers to get ourselves some quartz. I actually had to trade up a lot of the masons as well so we could unlock the quartz trade. And whilst I was in my mason village, I actually harvested up some crops to breed more masons for the future but we got all the quartz we need managed to get some white concrete smelted some of the quartz as well to get some smooth quartz and finished off by getting some more pink wool for some banners which we just replicated it's very easy now and some brewing stands of course and now we're ready to build so building we did and we're making a sort of temple here very quartz slash pink temple very pink in comparison to the other builds and that's three buildings down i know this one kind of stands out quite a bit but that was kind of 
what I was hoping it would do. We're going to add a lot of more decoration and more buildings in, so hopefully it won't stand out so much in the future. But this is going to be definitely a place where all of these villagers can pick up their trades. I'm going to need a lot more beds because so far we've got space for two plus four villagers. I guess we should build some more houses. And this time, I'm not going to show me getting the materials and I'm not going to time lapse me building the building. Instead, we're going to go through it step by step. Let's go gather them off camera. Oh, Joel, you classic YouTuber. I know. Of course, gathering the materials off camera, it doesn't rain. But now that I actually want to speak and talk you through this build, it rains. I'm going to wait it out by my bone meal farm. Ah, this noise is so much nicer for me to listen to. All right, now we can get building. Now I want to start this off by saying I design all these buildings in my creative world and I've been using Lightmatica to help me bring them to life in this world. If you don't know Lightmatica, it makes this invisible outline and then you can just place the blocks where you want to place them. However, just to make things a little bit more visually pleasing for you guys, we're not going to use them during this build. Anyway, this building here is a square and we're going to be using some some cherry wood once again and lots of different color pinks like this pink terracotta here for the door I'm gonna grab one block of coarse dirt because this here is gonna be for the path outside as I like to place doors on the inside like this because it just adds a lot of texture like this here looks so much better than that, in my opinion, because you've got that one extra block of depth. And I know I said we weren't going to use trapdoors, but these here aren't so bad. I don't think villagers will get caught on these. And this is one of my favorite techniques of making doors, is to add in a sort of curve like so. And place one more trapdoor on there like so, and you've got this sort of lovely little archway. On the exterior, we're going to be using some white terracotta like so to add a little bit more depth around this thing and we're also going to use some cherry trap doors as like little window sills and for all the other builds so far we've done one block high windows but this one's going to be a bit different this one's going to have two block high windows because we're going to only have two windows and we want to bring in more light from the outside i chose not to have a window on this side just because well it's not very pleasing to look at just this dirt is it we're also going to be doing very similar to what we did on this build here by adding a sort of cherry wood log around the top, which will extend the roof out. The roof comes out a bit further and we're going to use these stairs here, kind of similar to how we did it in this last build. However, we're going to do it to more of an extreme to kind of match the panda sanctuary down there. I actually forgot a part. We're going to add in some cherry slabs and trap doors down here to make this shape. So when you look at it from the side, it sort of curves in a little bit. I love the new cherry wood, but I really wish we had more trap doors that were solid like spruce and dark oak. Just makes detailing so much more fun. Anyway, let's copy what we did on that side all the way round. Now for this roof, we want it to be ending in a point. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a sort of gradual curved point. So we're going to go one block, another block, and then a double. But we're going to use a trap door to sort of, you know, smooth the transition. Then another trap door, two, and then the final point there. And then we copy this on every side before finishing off the point with a wall fence and end rod and then for the roof itself we're going to use some more moss and some mossy stone bricks and bring this up to the same point and there you go a very nice roof however we're going to add in some more things which are some flowers and some azalea leaves and we can just pop these around pretty much at random but of course can only place the flowers on the moss and now it matches the other buildings but of course, we still have to do the interior and I'm going to do the granite slash terracotta checkerboard floors. I just really like this. And we're going to do a ceiling as well where we'll place this shroom light in the middle with a mangrove trap door over it. And now we don't need any torches in here. Great. But we do need a flower pot, crafting table. We don't really need this, but I put them in anyway. Chest, the double bed and a decorated pot because they're my new favorite thing to decorate with. And there you have it, a lovely little home for some villagers. 
Now the next few buildings all use the same materials, kind of similar style to the one in the background. So I'm just going to stop gathering the materials for each building and instead just gather a load and hope we can finish all of the final buildings. Also, I quickly want to try out a new way of harvesting my cherry trees. Because we have this absolute mess over here for when we were gathering cherry leaves. And I don't want to have to chop it down, so I just want to see if I could blow some of it up. Let's see how successful this is. Any good? 46, just like that? No, surely not. 62! Wow, yeah, okay, this is successful. Let's do this a few more times. So for 12 TNT, we got eight stacks and a bit of cherry wood. And that took no time at all. Wow, people should really make wood farms using TNT. Just to make sure I want that to be clear that that was sarcastic. Anyway, let's get rid of the other stuff we need. So of course, we started putting everything in our shulker boxes. Stripping some wood now so I don't have to strip it later. Crafting up some dark oak blocks. Smelting some glass. Getting some cobblestone to make some brewing stands. Getting a load of mossy blocks for the roof. Dying up some terracotta. Having a very rough time killing some blazes with gas also shooting at me. Harvesting a few shroom lights while we're still in the nether. And finally dyeing some sheep and collecting some wool. Which we crafted into beds. Alrighty, this should be plenty of the things we need. Maybe I should say something important now so that I don't get cut off because it'd be really annoying. Oops, that's awkward. Anyway, here we're building our first diagonal build. I thought I'd throw a diagonal one in there because, I don't know, it looks a bit different to the other buildings. And this interior is going to be very quick. At this point, I'm just trying to get as many beds in as possible. So we're going to have five in here. And some very simple decoration like that. And there you go. A simple house for some simple villagers. Next build. Next up, we've got a very small house up here on the cliffside. It's very similar to the one I showed you me building, except the roof goes the other way. And I'll show you the interior in a second, as it was only tiny. Instead, let's move on to this other building here, our final one in this sort of style, however slightly different to the others. Now for a bit of interior in this one, and we're actually going to add in some walls, because I want to get as many bedrooms as possible in this place. So let's put a double bed in here with a chest. And then two chests and another double bed there. A little plant in the corner. And just another shelf there and that'll do nicely. Now we only have two buildings left to build and this village is complete and we can start populating it. And they're both slightly different in different ways. Let's grab the stuff I need for it. And the first one's another sort of pagoda type thing, except it looks slightly like a mushroom. I then gathered some more materials and got building our final building, which is this sort of weird cherry tree spire thing, which it looks okay. And just like that, every building is complete. However, it just looks terrible at the moment, doesn't it? Look at this place. It's not joined up. There's just random buildings floating around and I, I don't like them. We need to fix this because getting up to your house like this is not a good way to get up to your house. And this is the interior of this place, by the way. I didn't show this, but we're going to have three villagers locked in here and the same with this spire up here. We're going to have one villager locked in there. Or maybe we could do three. The reason the villagers will be locked into their spots in these ones here is because we're going to add a staircase up here, but we're not going to allow villagers to wander freely up here. As with the tree, there's just so many places for them to escape. I just, I just don't think it's possible to villager-proof it without it looking really ugly. They'll be able to wander around down here though. Which brings us to the next step, and that is finish the village. We've got to add in a path, we've got to add in bushes, we've got to add in walls so they can't escape. We're going to make this thing really come to life. And I've got an idea which I think is going to look amazing. So let's get started by gathering up a load of stuff. Have we gathered a lot of stuff already this episode? So, so let's just speed through it with half a second per thing we gather. And blink and you might miss it, but look, whoa, loads of stuff is being gathered. We even went to the end and the nether, and we also got some other stuff. There's more materials for this than any of the buildings, I think, but we've got them all now. This is all we need to transform this place. So I guess 
we should get transforming. So we're going to start off by adding a pathway of course dirt, linking up all the houses and also a little staircase linking up the top two houses as well. We're then going to head down below, add in some walls and some bushes around to sort of block off the villagers from escaping. And now it's time for the mushroom phase. That's right, mushrooms. It's magical. Before I show you how it looks, we're finally going to add in a load of these pink petals around because obviously we are under the cherry tree. I want to make it look like the cherry leaves have like fallen on the ground sort of thing, which is why I've got so many of them. Let's get placing. And just like that, our lovely new village is complete. Obviously, we still need to add the villagers. I'll add those in a second. But this place is looking great. It really feels magical and I think it goes so well with the tree in the background. This here is the gateway stopping any villagers getting up to this level up here where we've got these houses, which we will fill at a later date. At first, I just want to get the villagers in there. But look how cute this place is. I really, really like it. I think it's one of the better builds I've got in this place so far. Before we move the villagers, let's talk about this side. There's still so much area around the base of this tree. There's all of this side as well, and don't worry, we have plans in the future. We might carry on the theme, but with some other useful builds. But let's go get those villagers and bring them over. Let's start by running a rail track all the way over there. So I got to work speed bridging my way because I like to show off, and then also placing the rails on the bridge I had created. And finally, we got some villagers in the minecart, and I actually decided to transfer all the villagers across to the new area. And I actually followed this one here who didn't have a trade yet, and look at him. He picks up a trade instantly. Lovely little guy. I then blocked off the old entrance to the place and got destroying all all the rails as well as all of the grass blocks. I didn't bother collecting them because I don't want to keep them anymore. That was relatively painless. Now for the final step, which is make a lot of bread and see if we can locate these guys to get them to breed up a bit more. There's some in here. Here, take my bread. Oh, look, they're actually exploring. Hello, fella. Do you want to go find someone to breed with? Take my bread. Take the bread. Good. Go find someone to breed with. Look at this fella. He wants to breed with you. Come on, look. Breed. 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 Dare you. Dare you to breed. I give you all that bread. Do something with it. Come on. Do something with the bread. You greedy villager. You can't have it all to yourself. Maybe we have to wait for them to find a bed at night, but we'll see. Let's wait out till night and see if them finding a bed changes anything. Not sure if it does. While we wait, I'll get some more wheat. And also, I thought I'd update you all on my stats. It's been a while. Here's what they're looking like at the moment. The main one down here, 11 days play, which is over 260 plus hours now. And in case you're wondering, grass has now overtaken cherry leaves as my most broken block. It's a new day. Have we any babies? This guy's going on a wonder, and of course he's stuck on the only trap doors I put in this entire area. You idiot. Maybe I'll try giving them more bread. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we got a baby. Look at it. Lovely. It's working. Let's throw some more bread at this person over here, see what happens. I'll call that a success. And to celebrate, here's a little run through with shaders. Oh, isn't it lovely? Yes, it is. I'm saying that even though I built it. I don't care. I'm very proud of this place. I have this village here. And I have this village here. I have this kind of village as well. And I also have this weird library thing I built a while ago. However, the only way I have to get emeralds is to head into my iron farm, grab some iron, then head over to my city into these watchtowers here and trade these guys for emeralds, which is okay if you only want a small amount of emeralds. So we need a better way of getting emeralds, obviously. And we're gonna do that by building a raid farm. But wait, I don't wanna build this raid farm without having actually finished a proper raid in person first. So we're gonna start off today with probably the scariest thing we've done yet. And I wanna go in well prepared. So let's firstly grab my chest plate and a bow. Of course, the totem of undying. And also buy some more arrows. And let's also make ourselves a couple of crossbows and enchant them to see if we get anything good. Not bad. Pretty good. I didn't even realize this, but this village over here sells an infinity book. 
why have I not done this yet? But I'm over here because I want to get a quick charge buck as quick charge one is just not good enough. Let's see how long it takes. Not long at all, but holy moly is that expensive. I can't even afford two. Guess we got to sell more iron. There's one and there's two. Also, let's add infinity to this. And these crossbows... They're not for arrows. That's right, we're gonna get some rockets. So let's grab a load of gunpowder from our gunpowder farm and make ourselves some firework stars. And then we can make ourselves a load of these crazy fireworks. Wow, that's quite a lot. And these things pack quite a punch once you load them into your crossbows. Okay, I think I'm ready. Let's go get some bad omen. Oh no, it's raining. This is not good. It's just a bad sign. Now I know there's a pillager outpost here, and there's also a village over there which could be defended. Hang on, is that floating? This could be perfect. This could be the cheesiest village raid ever. I'll just chill up here. I've just had a great idea, which I can't believe I didn't already think of. Let's shear a load of these pumpkins here. And a load of iron blocks from our iron farm. As yes, I want to get some help from our iron golem friends. I'm going to use all 41 pumpkin heads I've just gathered. This is going to be kind of crazy. I realized putting them all in a line was stupid, so I've spread them out a bit. I just got to make sure not to hit any of these myself, as it could get ugly. Hopefully, they, the raiders come this way, though, because there's quite a few of these guys up here. Okay, let's start the raid. I've been putting it off. Ooh, a goat horn. Where on earth is a banner guy? I've killed so many of these guys. Aha, finally. And let me test out my new crossbow on him. Okay. Oh, it did some sort of damage at least. Let's have a quick nap. And then let's get this party started. I'm gonna start up here first and hide like a little wuss. But I'm ready for this raid. My iron golems are taking them all out already. Look at them. Where <laughs> they're all just dying. What? <laughs> I didn't have to do anything for the first round. I thought this was going to be scary. I want to get involved a little bit. Yeah, I killed one. Okay, there's a lot more appearing now. Hopefully I can get some kills. Yeah. Go, firework rockets, go. I got one. Wow, these are really powerful. Haha. <laughs> yes. And I guess there's another totem. That was pretty easy. Oh, gosh, there's two of these beasts here. Oh, easy work. I'm starting to think 41 iron golems might have been too many. Okay, here we go. This is where it's getting good. Oh, the vexes. Oh, gosh. I'm going to actually eat my golden apple. I'm a bit scared. <laughs> Let's put that back in our hand. Another totem. Stupid vexes. Ow, they're quite powerful. Oh, gosh. Okay, okay. Oh, we're done. Oh, well. That was one of the easiest things I've ever done. <laughs> Get them, Iron Golems. Yes. Well, that's that done. I can make a raid farm in peace now. So what am I going to do with this lovely hero of the village icon? Well, nothing, to be honest. There's not really any trades that I need right now. So what I'm actually going to do is fix my nether portal. Not this one, but that one. My original idea of this was this portal would lead me to the nether, and this portal would lead me to the nether roof. However, I tried to link up this portal to the roof, but when you go through it, you end up in the exact same portal as the other one. And you come back through and you end up on this side. They're too close together. So we're gonna fix that. First, let's clear out this original portal. And now we have to extend this tunnel a lot. So let's use a beacon to make it a bit quicker. So when I built this thing the first time, I gravely underestimated how far away you have to be for these portals to not link up. So after digging out the hole, I collected a load of materials, including some never rack and some leaves, and we got placing in this new tunnel to make it look a lot nicer than it did before with some fire down the side to signify the never in some way. I also went and got myself a load of new obsidian because we're going to head to the roof. And although we're going to light this portal now, we're not going to head through just yet. As I don't want to just build a boring old normal portal on the roof. Oh no, no, no. We like to go extra here. I was upside down for a second then. 
So let's build something very extra. And for that, we're gonna need a lot of materials. Now with it being the nether, of course, we're gonna go with a purple theme. I went and got myself some amethyst plus some lapis, which I turned into blue dye, which I then turned into some purple dye. Also got myself some purple wool, got myself some granite, some purple glass, and of course, some warped nylium. I then went and started to dismantle this fortress here to get myself a load of nether bricks, which was really fun with loads of blazers shooting me. And that is everything. Now all we have to do is get back on that nether roof which we should be able to do like this. There we go. And that's our old portal there, which doesn't link up so we can get rid of this. And let's get time lapsing on you one. It's very tricky to build something on a completely flat surface and also try and spawn proof it so that nothing will spawn up here, which is why we're using lots of slabs and weird things like carpet. But unfortunately, my game crashed before I could finish the top. So here it is, baby. What a weird looking portal. <laughs> I just wanted to do something a little bit different to what I've been building with recently. And this definitely fits the different narrative. It's on the roof away from everything else. So I don't have to look at it very often. But anyway, I've lit the portal now. I think it looks okay. It looks kind of cool. Let's head through the portal and hope it takes us to the back of the tunnel. Please work this time. Yes, we're back here. And then we go back through. Please don't take me to the nether back on the roof. Beautiful. It's all linked up. So that's project one of three done today. Let's move on to project number two, which is of course the raid farm. And we don't actually need that many materials for this. I just need some cobblestone to make myself some pistons and some sticky pistons. Also some sand for a load of glass. And then we also got ourselves some redstone, of course, and some quartz to make some observers and also a couple of buckets of lava. And that's it, really. Now there's some farms I can explain and some farms I'm not even going to bother to attempt to explain. And this is one of those farms. I'm going to be following a tutorial by Ian X04, who made this amazing raid farm, which I'm pretty sure everybody uses. It's going to be built in the middle of the ocean and I'm just going to time lapse it. Let's see how long it takes to build. The tutorial for this farm is amazing. If you ever want to build a raid farm, this one is the best to build, I would say. It starts out with this lava casting here, which is a really cool way of building a farm. And then we had to go get the villagers and oh my gosh, this was painful. But we managed to get them into the water tube, send them up to the top here and get them falling into their holes. Well, the first two went pretty well. Then afterwards, I tried this technique again and oh, oh, what are they doing? Oh, they're moving. Oh, they're dead. Okay, we'll go get another one. We'll try it again. Um, oh, he's falling again. Oh, yeah, he's dead as well. So, okay, what about the third time's a charm in a different spot this time? Nope, he's dead as well. All right, well, I had to improvise and use a boat here and get them down myself, which was quite fun. And we got them into their holes they needed to be in eventually, although it was a little bit awkward. And I had to do this again for another villager and boat him down to his platform and then once we had all four in we got working on the rest of the farm again just following the tutorial not really sure what's going on but i do know how this part works though this is an item sort and we also put a boat here to catch future pillager bosses well that took a long time but i think we're finally ready to test this thing out gosh i hope it doesn't kill me let's head over and get some bad omen hello fella thank you all right, I'm nervous. I've got stuff in my hot bar. I'll put the totem on just in case. I've used one of these before on an SMP I've been on, but let's head in here and I can hear noises. Okay, it's working. It sounds like, oh gosh, it's loud. I'm going to run it for five minutes and see what happens. Three, two, one. Let's leave. Fly away. Now, at the moment, I can't AFK for too long because my hunger will go down. But let's have a look in these chests up here, shall we? Did we get many emeralds? This is five minutes, remember. Oh my gosh. Also, some gunpowder, some redstone, and oh, a few totems, I guess. I'll just throw all the stuff that is unneeded out into the open. And leave that to collect more totems. Not that I'm ever going to need this many totems, to be honest. Oh, my inventory's full of stuff as well. So after five minutes of AFKing, that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. Pretty ridiculous. And we've got some Bannerman up here as well. So we can reset the farm and give it another go next time. Well, there you have it. Project 2 complete. It's now time for Project 3, which is by far 
the biggest project of today. Now for this project, we're going to need a lot of materials. But what is this project, Joel? Well, there's a couple more farms I want to build today. One of those is being a sugarcane farm. At the moment, this is our sugarcane farm. It's me. I'm the sugarcane farm. I've put sugarcane nearly 3,000 times, and I'm a bit sick of it, to be honest. So we're going to use the big area under my tree on the right-hand side here to build a huge sugarcane farm. And I thought, while we're here, we may as well build a super smelter, as I still don't have one of those. And of course, you know me, we can't leave things looking ugly. We've got to decorate them, and for a big sugarcane farm, you need a big build. But let's start by getting both the sugarcane farm and the super smelter built. And then after that, we'll build the building around it. So of course, we're going to need quite a lot of materials as this is quite a considerably bigger sugarcane farm. It's going to be like every other sugarcane farm you've seen. Very simple to build. You just need a lot of redstone, which my cleric village I built last time is coming in amazing for getting redstone. I used to hate mining it so much. Now I can just go and trade some emeralds for some redstone. We also collected myself a load of cobblestone as we needed so many pistons. Look how many pistons we actually end up with here. Over five stacks. I also needed a load of observers plus some quartz to make a load more observers. Now the previous farm, obviously I followed a tutorial. This farm is my own design, which is why it's probably going to be terrible. But I'm going to build it anyway with pride and let's see if it works. It should work, but maybe not very well. And by that, I mean, it's probably not the smartest redstone. It's pretty stupid because I made it myself, but we've just got five chambers on this layer here, all filled with sugarcane and pistons and observers. And then we've got another layer on top. And finally, we've got a big old chest system. It is done! The sugarcane farm, which is very loud and annoying, but actually depositing sugarcane right now, I'm pretty sure. As while I was building the top section, oh, hello, Enderman in there. The bottom section was working away, and as you can see, bam, sugarcane, bam, sugarcane. Yes, it's very loud and clicky, and that's because I'm bad at redstone. But it works like every other sugarcane farm, basically when the sugarcane grows long enough, to hit the observers, the pistons get pushed. And then we got these minecart hoppers here going around collecting stuff. And if they collect stuff, they'll stop at the unloading station up here, which will unload it into this dispenser, shoot it into this water stream and into these chests. But this clicking noise is making me very annoyed. So I'm going to head off and we're going to work on the super smelter now, which is not my design. Not many materials needed for this. And we're going to be following a tutorial by They6. Both tutorials for the farm so far will be linked in the description. Let's get building. A very quick and easy build. It only took about 15 minutes and it's a very simple super smelter, really. There we go. Very straightforward. You put coal in these bottom ones here and in the top ones you put the materials, flick the levers, off it goes. And we're going to be putting this to use very shortly as we are going to cover up both these farms here with one massive building. First, we had to head to my creative world to design it. And I, I started off with some white boxes like usual, then a bit of like, you know, orange wool for the floor. And now I'm not going to show you anymore because we finished the rest of the build. And we need a lot of materials for this because this is a big build. And one of the things we need a lot of is deep slate. So we're going to head down and get mining. And this might take a while as I need well over a shulker. So we headed down to this cave here and we got mining out some deep slate as well as a bit of tough as well. Man, I wish beacons worked on deep slate because this is painful. Anyway, it's done now and as you can see, we got a lot of deep slate tiles and other stuff. We also got some coal here, which we put into our super smelter, which works rather lovely, which is great. We also went over to our bone mill farm and we AFK'd in said bone mill farm for about 30 minutes as it had broken last time and I needed to fix it. We did manage to get a load of bone mill in the end though and went and used our wood farm to get ourselves a load of spruce wood and spruce slabs but we also needed some stripped spruce wood and rather than use the wood farm for that I thought I'd just go chop down a load of spruce trees which took a long time but we got all the ones we need I also went and got myself some cobblestone and I also started smelting some regular stone to get some smooth stone before collecting some cherry wood with some TNT I collected a load of random stuff that was in my storage system before AFK my bone mill farm again this time for about 20 minutes got a lot more bone mill this time because the farm was fixed and managed to turn all the oak 
took wood into a lot of different things such as lecterns, bookshelves and stuff like that. I ended up buying some bookshelves though, killing some squid for some black terracotta, smelting said terracotta to get some glazed terracotta. Also got a load of red concrete here as well as some mangrove wood, birch leaves, never gold blocks and some warped blocks as well. I also got myself a load of redstone to make some lamp blocks, some acacia wood. Yes, this is a lot of materials I know. Also went and got some more mangrove wood as I didn't have anywhere near enough before, before finally getting some andesite and oh my gosh, we're done. And just like that, we are done. I apologize for the clicking. I put all the materials here. There, there's a lot of them. Uh, this is quite a big building. Yeah. I know although gathering materials sometimes can be dull and boring for me, it's very quick for you, so you probably quite like it, but for me, very dull and boring. I am so excited to show you this build that I don't care because it's one of the coolest builds so far in this world. And I know I say that every episode, but I, I just feel like it is okay. We're going to cover up these ugly farms and I'm so excited. Let's cut to a time lapse, shall we? But first, before we do, here's my best impression of a high-pitched voice person saying, please subscribe. Subscribe. Please subscribe. There you go. And this build took four and a half hours to finish. You'll see the days ticking past in this every time it goes. That's 10 minutes. We started off with the bottom layer here, which was mainly stone and some smooth stone. And we made this sort of gradient with the cobble and the tuff at the bottom. I then made these two towers on the corners of the build before working on the main building, covering up the sugarcane farm, using lots of red terracotta, lots of red concrete, and making this sort of amazing roof here. I love this style. I think it looks really, really cool and I'm very happy with how it turned out. I didn't want to just do one plain roof. I did so many different like bits coming off this and all the depth and stuff and I think it just looks amazing. We also did this little garden section here which I'll show you in a second and finally another tower and a building to cover up the super smelter and look at it. Look at it. It is huge. It is massive. This is one of the biggest builds so far. I say that every time but it is and it doesn't look very big because it's right next to my cherry tree but if we come down here to the entrance it's actually got a couple of entrances, but this is one of them. We head up these stairs and you can see how big this thing is. The scale it is kind of crazy. Yes, it's still clicking because the farm is still working. We've got a lovely view from the balcony over here looking out on the rest of our world. And obviously we have the farm which has been working away so well. Look at all that sugar cane in just four hours. I'm very happy with all that. Also, the interior is not decorated whatsoever. I'm not sure if I will ever decorate it in case I need to access the farm, but yeah, it is not <laughs> decorated at all. Like this bit over here as well, just if you go down there, you fall into a big hole, so don't do that. But I really love how this place has got like all these different layers. We've got this nice little tree and this gardeny section here, which I think looks amazing. Another balcony looking out if we ever expand in that direction in the future. We've also got the section up here where we've got another one of those pink towers, a little bench to sit out on. And of course, the super smelter, which worked perfectly, by the way. Very, very cool. And then the thing is with this build, it's done, but... I feel like we could expand it in the future, maybe come down this way a bit, maybe have another big building if we can ever think of something else to put there. Let me know if you've got any ideas in the comments. But before we do some other stuff today, let's have a quick shaders fly through, shall we? Oh, does it look good with shaders? I don't know, tell me. I can't see it at the moment, I haven't got them on, I'm actually just flying around in normal game, I'm going to do it in replay mod, but I'm hoping it does. Now we're not finished just yet, as we need to link this thing up to the rest of our area over here. But we have a bit of a problem, and that problem is the fact we have way too many pandas. They're very cute, I know. They are causing me some lag. So I'm gonna have a battle against the pandas. Trust me, it'll be a fair fight. Let's begin. Guys, I'm really struggling. I genuinely feel awful killing these things. They have to go, but I feel so bad. Guess I need to change up my mindset. Master Smallish Pete, there's only one of you. What are we going to do? I 
I don't want to talk about it. I never want to talk about it ever again. We never mention this moment. Anyway, time to build the trail uh, leading up to the castle. So I quickly went and got myself some cobblestone, also some spruce wood, and finally some mushroom blocks. And then we also traded some bricks from our villagers over here. And then we got working on the path using some coarse dirt here to link up to the stairs to our castle. We then added in some brick walls down the side of it. And then this spruce sort of like barrier slash wall thing here just separating the path. We also added in some bamboo and bushes just next to the path here and then it started to rain but we moved on to adding in some mushrooms yes you saw me getting some mushrooms earlier we are sort of matching the vibe from the village here slash transitioning it into this sort of new area we've got and then came a lot of terraforming using some cobblestone some azalea leaves which we had lots of in our chest for some reason i think it was just when i was getting flowering azalea leaves in the past and we sort of made this sort of rocky weird podzily biome which i think looks pretty good you can see we're lighting up at night as well I did in some lilacs and finally some of the sort of pink petals just scattered around. I'm a bit unsure about these pink petals. From like up at this angle, if I land, they look pretty cool, you know, sort of just like spread out around the area. However, they are just like invisible from some angles slash look just like a bit weird. You just look like some random pixels. But anyway, the path up to the castle is looking very nice. I actually forgot to add in the bamboo up here, so let's just plop some down quickly. But I'm really liking the terraforming there. I think that has turned out looking rather nice. It's quite a bit different to the other stuff we've got going on, but I like it a lot. However, this area down here is still plain. And I want to fix that, but first, let's fix inside here, as it was really irking me how ugly all the water, etc., was down here. Next up, let's tackle this quickly, and I think what we're going to do is we're going to sort of do stuff similar to what we've done down here. So first, I need to actually go get this sort of stuff. And I had a fair lot of it, but I need to get some ferns, some pods, so I also went to the nether roof and used a new portal to find a gravel biome for the first time to get some gravel, of course. I can't wait to use that in the future to get around a bit easier. Easier, but we got working on this sort of side bit here. I don't really know what to call it. We added in some trees, a load of bushes, did a bit of bone milling as well, and we got it sorted. There we go. That's looking a lot better. There's still some bits we need to sort out in the future, but I'm not sure what I want to do there just yet. Look at this, though. What a castle. I am loving how this thing has turned out. And this farm in here. Oh, yes, sugarcane. We don't have to worry anymore. Very nice. Today, we're going to be doing something reasonably scary for us as we're heading back to the Never. Last time, we extended our portal to the Never roof, but this time, we're working on this side of the portal in the Never itself. And oh boy, we have some big plans. When I come to the Never at the moment, it is ugly. It is hideous. It is just a basic portal. I want my entrance to be grand because I am special and people need to treat me that way. So we're going to do something I've never done before and that is terraform the nether. I've never really ever built in the nether before. Pardon the pun. And that's all going to change today. So obviously we need to take some precautions beforehand as the nether has a lot of lava and lava hurts me and I'm going to resist it. So first things first, we need some magma cream. I was thinking, would they have some in a bastion chest? Got my totem on, so I feel a bit safer than usual. But these are piglin brutes. Okay, let's quickly get this chest. Hopefully there's some magma cream in it. Yes. Ooh, ancient debris. Hello. I genuinely would say bastions are like the most terrifying thing in hardcore Minecraft. Okay, let's leave. I haven't got soul speed yet. Let's just get some magma cream the old-fashioned way. And of course, we're going to use these magma creams to make ourselves some fire-resistant potions, which we're going to place in this orange shulker. So give me a while. I've got to craft 30 potions, meaning I hear this noise 30 times. Okay, we have four hours worth of fire resistance right there. Hopefully that should last us. That's part one of the preparations complete. Now for part two. My shulker box supply is getting lower and lower and the bigger the projects I do, the more I find myself needing. So I'm going to go end raiding for a little bit and let's see how many shulker shells we can get. So off to the end, we went in search of some end cities. I've not done this since I unlocked the end and I really just hate the end. It's so boring. These cities are all the same, and there's just nothing fun here. I really wish Minecraft would update this, but I don't think I'm going to get that anytime soon. Anyway, I killed a load of shulkers, and I also saw this end city, which excited me. Look at the size of this beast. 
Woo! Yes, the end is so boring, I get excited by a big end city. Anyway, after collecting a load of stuff and some shulker shells, we headed home. But before we went home, we killed some endermen to fix up our tools, crafted our shulker boxes, and then we got sorting out some of our chests as well, because they were just overflowing with stuff. Okay, I think that's enough preparing now. Let's head to the nether, where we are not going to get building right away. I want to build something big. And that something big is going to go here. However, I want this thing to look really cool. And for that, I want it to be surrounded by lava and not have, you know, just bits jutting into it from up here or there or there or there. So we are about to do the biggest terraforming we've done so far. To get to Neverrack in our statistics, we have to scroll down all the way to here. 6,462. I've punched grass more times than that. Which reminds me I haven't touched grass in the real world in a long time. Oh boy, I'm sad. That number is going to drastically change as we are going to be doing some mega terraforming. This is going to take a long time. We're on day 1596. Gosh, I don't want to even know when this is going to end. All I do know is I want to get started. I want to start off by saying the days are going to be hard to track here as there's no sun going down and me sleeping to track it. But we're only one time lapse in and we've already had a disaster. I was mindlessly mining some never wreck and then... Yeah. No! My pickaxe! No! I've had it for so long and I wasn't paying attention! Oh gosh! Well, obviously, I need to go make another one now. Oh, that's so sad. Normally, in the past, if you broke one of these things, it's not a huge deal. But now, you have to go looking for these stupid Neverite upgrades. Ooh, pigstep. Seeing as I started my world before, I have to go quite far out to get a bastion that will generate them. But there we go. That was not actually too hard. And let's make sure we don't lose it again. Okay. Round two, let's try again. Although a very lengthy and long process, mining the Neverack itself is quite satisfying because it just cuts through like butter. What's not satisfying though is all the stupid gas. I hate them so much. Two more pickaxes fully used up. We're up to 31,000 Neverack already. I still have so much to clear. Oh, this could be in the 100,000s. Oh gosh. At some point, I will stop collecting it. Uh, at the moment though, I thought, you know what? Yeah, I'll put it in some chests just in case I need it for the future. But I thought I'd fix my pickaxe at the raid farm. Holy moly, this thing fixes the tools quickly. Look at it in the bottom left corner. As I'm speaking right now, this is real time. This is real time. This is how quick it's going up. I went to fix my tools there because one, it was quick. And two, can use the emeralds to buy myself some bottles of enchanting. Back to the never, I guess. Time to rack up some more never rack. Sometimes I wish I was one of those hardcore Minecraft YouTubers that cheated. But no, to do it legitimately, to make myself feel good, to keep myself motivated, you stupid, silly man. Ooh, Joel, this isn't a time lapse. This is some epic shots of you mining Neverag because mining Neverag is epic. I'm going insane, guys. It's not been that long yet, and I'm already going insane. I am living and breathing Neverag. All I see in my dreams is Neverag. It's already happened. My most mind block. 40,000 nearly. We still got so much to go. All of this has to go. All of that has to go. All of that has to go. A little bit of that. Some of that. Some of that. I think I'm beginning to lose my mind. Big time lapse time. And this is where we got seriously down to business. All this here, you can see the days going past. Each day is 20 minutes, by the way, because I'm not sleeping. So a long time spent in the nether. Too long. Too long for one person to spend in the nether. Also, we also went and had to fix our tools in between. And then we had to mine some more stuff. And then we had to go and fix our tools in between. Sometimes I used villagers to do that. And then we had to go mine some more nether rack. And some more nether rack. And then we went and fixed our tools again. And then guess what? You guessed it. Mind more Neverack. Oh my gosh, I hate Neverack. Now six hours into mining this, we've got another couple of broken pickaxes. And we've officially passed the 100,000 mark. Oh my gosh, we've flown past it. And although we've made some decent progress, we've got rid of quite a lot of this area here. There's still so much more to do. So we're going to try another method quickly. And for it, we have to do a few things first. And the first of which is AFKing 
our creeper farm. So we get to chill in this lovely little balloon up here while below the creepers are spawning in. I actually forgot I was AFKing and I went to Sainsbury's, which is why it went so dark here for a bit. This is a disappointingly small amount of gunpowder for the time I spent up there. I think it works worse at night. Because mobs spawn in. Oops. Let's get enough sand to make this TNT. So it's taken us about an hour and we've got two and a bit stacks of TNT. Hopefully this destroys a lot. Otherwise we're going to have to go mining again. Let's spread this TNT out randomly. I'm not going to be precise because I can't be bothered. All right, that's one stack down. Let's see how much destruction this does. Well, the pig. Oh, yes. The piglins are mad at me, which is, is, is kind of a downside of this. As they are all running at me. It also looks like I'm going to have to light every single one individually. It is doing a lot of damage for the amount of time I'm putting in, but I've got to include the one hour gathering the stuff for the TNT in this, and um, I'm not sure it's that much quicker. But I guess we'll use up the rest we gathered anyway. Yeah, blowing stuff up is fun. Look at that TNT blow stuff up. Wrong. Kids, TNT is not fun, especially if you're a hardcore YouTuber, because you do stupid stuff like this, where you mess around while standing on a TNT, and then you pop a totem for the first time. Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh. I dropped my boots and I didn't want to blow them up, so I sit on the TNT and my bloody thing activated. Oh gosh, that's the closest I've been to death. Why have I not got another totem? All right, we're going home. There's no audio, but here's what happened. My inventory is full. I was trying to pick up my boots. I don't even know how I dropped them. Thank goodness I had that totem. Oh my gosh, if I hadn't done the raid last episode, I would have died. Oh my gosh, I'm... Okay, TNT's scary. Okay, last bit of TNT. It did a quite decent amount of destruction there. But I think I'm going to go back to mining as uh, I got a bit scared. First, I went and AFK'd my raid farm for a little bit, though, and got a load of emeralds so I could buy myself an efficiency four book to put on my hoe as I had to destroy some warped blocks up here. I then got mining more Neverack. Oh, look at the days go past. 20 minutes, another 20 minutes, all mining Neverack. Gas, by the way, shooting me the entire time. I hate gas. That's what I've discovered from this video. Gas are the worst. We also did some up here. We did some over there. We had some gas shooting us up here. We had some gas shooting at us over there. I mined out this entire section here where we had piglins attacking us the entire time. The never is horrible. I I'm complaining a lot, I know, but I, I did have fun a little bit. Just a little bit. And part one is done. We have cleared out a lot of space here. A lot of space. So much so that I never want to do this again. Obviously, I did not collect every bit of Neverack I gave up at one point and focused on, you know, the more important stuff like quartz, magma, gold, etc. But this process has taken nearly 12 hours in total. You can see here from the time lapse slash replay recordings. And I can say we have reached 211,000 Neverack. We started on 6,000, remember? 6,000. I picked up 100,000, and that's it. And I want to base this project around one single shape, and that shape is a star. So I headed into my creative world where I used this circle template to make a star template, and then I got messing around with some other star shapes as well. And now we are ready to get bringing it to life here. Let's start out by making that big star shape. Now, firstly, we're going to have to go get ourselves some blackstone. A lot of the build uses blackstone, so we're going to have to mine a lot of this stuff. But I'll just guess what we need for now. This is a big star. This is a lot of blackstone being used right now because this is a massive star. It's huge. We only want lava on the outside of the star. It doesn't matter if there's some in the inside, but we want all the lava to be neat on the outside. Also, I got about eight stacks thinking, oh, that'd be plenty of blackstone. I only have 18 left. That, that was close. Let me get some buckets. This is going to take a long time, isn't it? I wish lava worked like water worked. But no, of course it doesn't. Guess we better get started. What you're watching here is 20 minutes of progress. Uh, I'm going to try a different method using some dirt because this at the moment I, it's so hard to see what and what I haven't done. I was really struggling to see what was lava and what was flowing lava. So I put this grass down here to help me out. And then I thought, you know what? Let's try and cover up a bit of the stuff by using some magma blocks around the outside. That could look quite cool. Uh, so... I've done a bit. I've done a little bit. And I've decided this is the worst thing in the world. The gas keep breaking my magma blocks. Placing lava is a massive pain. So you know what? I don't care anymore if it, you know, is a bit wavy and all wobbly all over the place. 
And also, you just get stuck in this stuff. And look, it's just such a pain to get out. So I'm going to fill it in, but not fully. It's going to have bits of like, you know, it's going to look like that. And I don't care, okay? I do a little, but my patience has, has way, way gone. So let, let's just cover up the mess. Kind of. I may have sounded a bit upset there, so I'm sorry about that, but you have no idea how annoying gases are in the nether. If you squint your eyes, you can almost not see the fact that the lava is ugly. Just gotta really squint, though. We're only on day 1650, and I have a feeling this is gonna take uh, still quite a lot longer. And I just am not looking forward to guests constantly shooting at me again and again and breaking some blocks. At least there's this piglin child here to comfort me. Just kidding, I hate them. I've killed 133 guests. I'm pretty sure most of those have been from now. Same with the piglins. Oh my gosh, I hate them so much. Anyway, it's time to gather some blocks. And I'm actually quite looking forward to a material gathering montage as I can get some other materials not in the nether. Thank you, thank you. Please let me out of here. And we started off nice and calmly by just doing some crafting in our base. And then we went and chopped down some acacia trees. I actually had to bone mill a load more acacia trees as I needed a lot of acacia wood. You'll notice an orange and red theme appearing when I'm mining these materials. I also went and got myself a load of deep slate, like a lot of deep slate, about 40 minutes of mining deep slate. Look at all this deep slate we got here, it's a lot. And then mine some copper ore I'd collected in my chest because I need a load of raw copper blocks. I actually had to go out and get some more copper from the outside world. And after crafting it all up, we headed over to where we had farmed our cherry leaves before and got farming the cherry woods. No TNT because I couldn't be bothered, but we chopped a lot of it down. We also managed to get ourselves a load of red sand for some red sandstone. Oh, look, I wrote, hey, that's a throwback to Empire Season 1. I also went and got a beacon and got mining a load of terracotta as well. Some orange terracotta and some normal terracotta. It's my super smelter that I made last time a lot for this grind here, starting off with the red sandstone. I also went and killed a load of squid because we need a lot of black terracotta, which we're going to turn into black glazed terracotta along with red glazed terracotta. After smelting it all up, we headed back to the nether where I collected a lot of nether wart blocks, like a lot. I think we got over a shulker box's worth. I also collected a lot of shroom lights, some sand for some concrete powder and some glass, which you'll see me smelt in a bit, some pumpkin because orange. And while we waited for the glass to smelt in our super smelter, I mined a load of red and orange and yellow concrete. We got some wheat to make some mud bricks and then crafted a load of smithing tables because I'm going to build of those because I've got a load of iron. I then went into the mine to collect myself some gold deep slate ore and then stripped a load of mangrove wood I had lying around. Killed some squid for some black dye for concrete powder for which I needed gravel so I headed through this portal here. I also collected myself a load of mangrove wood and mangrove planks before planting a load of neverwort underneath my creeper farm so I can AFK my creeper farm and the neverwort will grow as I need a load of this stuff to turn into red nether bricks. I fixed up my tools and then headed to the nether where I spent a long time collecting blackstone. I think we got about four or five shulker boxes worth of blackstone. I think in total we spent about an hour and a half in the nether just collecting blackstone, which is crazy. But you can see here in a second how much blackstone we got. Lots and lots and lots, as well as some basalt as well. I then smelted up some nether rack, which we're going to use to make those red nether bricks, which we're using the nether wall for. I also had to AFK my gunpowder farm again and place some more never wart down because this stuff it is so slow to grow, but we had no other option. Even with Fortune 3, it's super slow, but we got all we need, and that's it. It's done. And a huge moment as we place the final shulker box. Oh my gosh. Let me count this up. 26 shulker boxes of materials here. 26! Look at all these materials. This is probably the longest material grind I've ever done just because of how weird and different all these materials are. These ones, oh, they were so annoying. I'm not sure they'll actually all fit in my inventory. No, they won't. Oh my gosh. This is so many materials. Let's take them to the nether, where I'm going to hollow out a little cave to store them in, as I don't want a gas coming along and blowing them up. This is so dumb. This is so many materials. Before we get building, I'm going to quickly do some trading with these villagers to fix up my pickaxe, and also buy some bottles of enchanting for the future, as well as trading up the other ones. And we're watching the sun set on a pretty big day, as if we sleep, 
We're now on day 1700. Wow. Meaning it's going to be pretty easy to calculate how many days it's going to take to build this thing. And by the way, it's taken 28 hours to get to this point, so I cannot wait to get building. So let's get to work on a massive time lapse. Now, the build itself only took four hours to finish off. I say four hours, that's still a long time, but I spent nine and a half hours gathering the materials there. But I wanted this to be a very never themed build. So we're starting off with a gradient with some blackstone all the way up to some neverrack using some black terracotta. We're then adding another layer of blackstone, which is sort of like pointy and adds a bit of texture to the build before working on the top bit where we added in some orange and also some smithing tables. Also, I accidentally paused the time lapse there. That's because I went out through the portal and I forgot to restart it again. Anyway, you can see this lovely orange gradient we've got on the floor here and we got working on the next level this level here is more deep slate themed we use all the deep slate we gathered earlier as well as some regular mud and some shroom lights with some mangrove trap doors i then added these towers on every single side until we got to the next level where we got working on the floor where we use this more terracotta gradient and the final tier we have this sort of red neverwart level and finally at the top we have this big orb with loads of shroom light in the middle and red and yellow and orange glass. But we're not done as we need to add the final aspect which is a bridge stretching across from the side here all the way over to the structure itself and this leads to a portal. And there's only one thing left to do now that is destroy this portal here and light the new one down here. Look at this thing. It is huge. It is one of the biggest things, if not the biggest structure we've built so far. I say this every time, but I just keep one-upping myself. Obviously, inside, it is completely empty at the moment. But it's not going to stay that way. As you can see, we've got doorways. We've got space for stuff inside. And my plan is to have a piglin bartering farm in here. But I'm extremely pleased with it. I love the shape. I think it looks amazing. Yes, it's a shame about the lava there. If anyone knows how to fix that in an easier way than just placing lava, please let me know. I might just have to just, you know, replace it all with stuff. I don't know what I'm going to do. But one of the cooler things I've ever built, in my opinion, I really love the gradients. And this project has taken 32 hours of in-game time plus like another 20 hours of designing this thing. This is, this is why I don't upload videos very often. And it's time for the part of the episode where I say, this is my biggest project so far. To give you an example of how big this thing is, this castle behind me took about two days to design. Our animal hotel, about two days. Our city, maybe three or four days. Just the designing in creative mode, this thing has taken me about nine days. This is a big build. We're on day 1717 at the moment. I won't be surprised if this takes us to day 2000. But before we can build in the end, I want to make the end a bit more accessible from the overworld. Because at the moment, the way to my end portal is down this two by two staircase here, which takes about 30 seconds or so to get down. And then when you finally get to the end fortress, you have to follow the dirt path, which I've laid out. Ooh, look, a dirt block. Let's follow it. Ooh, another one. Ooh, another few dirt blocks. Ooh, a diorite arrow pointing me in the right direction. So yeah, this isn't the most practical at the moment. So let's save these coordinates here, which so happens to be directly under this tree. And let's dig all the way down and hope we don't hit lava. Lovely. I decided to make it too wide just in case and it's easier to fly up then as well. Anyway, let's talk about our project in the end. It's big because we are going to be terraforming this ugly scenery. But before we can do any terraforming, we have quite a big project. And that project is to kill the ender dragon 19 times. Because I want to spawn in every single end gateway. There are 20 in total, meaning I have to kill the ender dragon another 19 times. And for that, we need 76 end crystals. And although last time in the nether, we killed a lot of ghasts, 
I was stupid and didn't save all the tears. I burned their tears out of frustration, meaning we only have 35. So I guess we have to go kill some ghasts, which didn't take too long as ghasts are very easy to kill. However, I did struggle finding a lot of the tears. We headed back to the surface and got ourselves some Eye of Enders, smelted ourselves some glass because we needed a lot of that. Also went and killed some blaze rods as I did actually need more. Then we crafted up all the end crystals we needed, got some more glass to finish them off and also crafted ourselves a better bow. Okay, we have our bow, we have our crystals, we've got lots of spare arrows, I don't know why I'd need them, we've got infinity, and we've even got some glass bottles to collect some dragon's breath. Let's head to the end and let's kill some ender dragons. Of course, we've already killed one ender dragon a long, long time ago. We have to kill 19 more, and I wouldn't say this is a hard challenge per se. It just takes ages. Look, here is me killing the first one of many here. We respawned. We got the achievement. I now have to kill and shoot all of these end crystals because I don't know how to do the speedrun method. And uh, yeah, this just takes a long time. You'll see later on that I got it quite good. I got it quite speedy. Of course, I'm not going to show you every single Ender Dragon kill in full as that would take a long time. So instead, here's a little compilation of me killing all the Ender Dragons. Some of them look very similar. Some of them look quite different. Some of them are quite weird. However, here is how quick I got the whole thing down. We'd hit this End Crystal. We shoot that End Crystal. Shoot another End Crystal. Rocket ourselves into the air while we're flying down. We'll shoot this one. You can see I was getting pretty accurate. Look at all these shots. Every single one hitting every single end crystal. The only annoying thing is you have to shoot these ones from below, which are a bit of a pain, but we got it done. Sometimes we styled on the ender dragon like here where it shoots me into the air and I'm like, haha, no, you're dead, fella. Also, look how funny this one looked when it died. <laughs> Don't know what happened to my voice there, but I fixed up my bow a few times as well as uh, we used up the full thing. If you were keeping track, you would notice that this kill here in a second is kill number 18. Oh, which means one left. And we light it for the final time. We spawn the last ender dragon. We only have one portal frame missing right here. As you can see, the rest of them are in. Here is the final shot on the ender dragon. And Ender Dragon number 20 has been killed, meaning just over here. Come on, where are you? Where are you? There you are. We have our final portal. 20 Ender Dragons. Oh my gosh, I killed 11,000 Endermen. What the heck? We have a full circle of portal frames. Oh yes, baby. Look at them. They're beautiful. Let's head back to the overworld for a bit. Now there's a few things we need to collect here. The first is some iron blocks. The next is a carved pumpkin, and we're also going to need a load of shulker boxes. Plus, let's just take some chests just to be safe. And just like that, it's time to head back to the end. And here we are going to equip our pumpkin. Lovely. Oh, that is ugly. I need to change that. There we go. A nice resource pack has fixed that. If I had to look through those pumpkin eyes, I would go insane. The iron blocks, however, is of course for some beacons. As we're going to need some haste too. Wait, haste too doesn't work on endstone? No, surely not. I thought it did. Oh no, this is going to take so long. I was planning on mining this endstone and we have a lot to mine. But at this pace, it's going to take so long. I do need 10,000 for the build though, so... Maybe let's see how long it takes me to mine that. I actually ended up going for 13,000 and it took me just over two hours. But as you can see, it's barely made a dent in this end island. Oh no. Two hours. Two hours for that. I've got so much I need to do. You see the portal frame circles? I, I want to make sure there's no end stone on the outside of that. This is going to take a while. I think we're going to have to use a different method, as obviously that took two hours, and I've only mined 15,000. I think we need to mine like 150,000. That's over 20 hours just mining. We can't do that. We can't do that. I'm going to have to experiment with some TNT dupers, which I've never really done before. Now, luckily, these things are quite easy to make. However, unluckily, we need a lot of slime blocks. And this is how much slime we have. Oh, no. 
Now these flying machines aren't that big, so I'm gonna get enough materials to make four of these things. Which unfortunately means I need 32 slime blocks. I'm gonna have to kill a lot of slimes. Everything else is pretty easy to get. The only thing we do need to do is get some tube coral fans. Okay, let's kill some slime as soon as the sun sets. Unfortunately, the sun is rising and we only got 25 slime, meaning we're gonna have to wait for the night once more. And there we go, that's better. Let's head home. And with that, we can now head back to the end. Okay, so we've set up our first TNT duping flying machine. Here it is here. And there's a block of obsidian there. It's quite hard to see with the end in the background, but it's just there in the center of the screen. I believe all we need to do to start this thing is place a redstone torch against here. Yes, and it's off. Oh gosh, I'm stuck on it. Oh, and it's blowing up stuff. Let's see what happens. Right, it's just sending TNT into the end at the moment, but okay, something's gone wrong. It's not moving. Oopsie daisy. I put something here. Can I take it away? No, we've broken it. Okay, good. Oh, it's off. I put a block of dirt there and it seems to be working. Yes, TNT is falling, and it's blowing up the end. Beautiful. Hopefully the end- oh gosh! Hopefully the endermen don't get mad at me. Looks like they're not, which is good. And it's doing a quicker job than I could do, which is good. Except I've blown up the machine. Haven't I? Yep, all the slime is gone. I've blown it all up. Right, so it was too low. All right, hopefully the machine doesn't blow itself up this time. And it's come to a stop. Good. All right, let's get a few of these on the go and see if we can destroy a load of this end stone. So I got making four more of these machines and I sent them off and it took a long, long time and not much was destroyed. I think we need to use a different machine. Luckily, most TNT fly machines use pretty much the same materials. However, I'm missing one slime block. I really do need to make a slime farm. But for now, let's head back to the swamp. Of course, it's a new moon. The only time slimes don't spawn in a swamp. There goes another 10 minutes of AFKing in the swamp, I guess. Despite the spawn rate being lower the next night, we still managed to find enough slime to get the final block. Okay, we're back in the end and we have everything we need to build this thing. I've been told I need to watch out for these bits of bedrock here by my friend Fwip and to make sure it's 25 blocks higher than them. So let's get to work building this thing. And we're building a design by Ray's work, the same one Fwip used in his video and it didn't take too long to build as the tutorial was very good. I built it a bit far away, which is an accident, but it should be ready to start working. All I have to do apparently is destroy this redstone block. And off it goes. And I've lost the redstone block, haven't I? Kinda need that to make it stop. Oh dear. Oh wait, it's up there. Thank goodness. So this thing will hit that place over there and then turn around and come back and repeat and then it will gradually make its way along. But for now, sending a lot of TNT into the void. But this is good. This shows us how low this will go. So it should pretty much cover the entire bottom of this, which is great. So let's just leave that for a bit, I guess. And I don't like to AFK, but I'm going to AFK until we get some destruction. Okay, we're now on day 1749 and we're finally getting some destruction. Look, oh my gosh, it's taken so long. I built this way too far out. Note to self for next time. But look, yes, it's blowing up some stuff. Nice. Now all we have to do is wait for it to blow up more stuff. And I'm using this time to edit the video. And although it looks very quick like this is happening, remember each day is 20 minutes in the end. So this is about three hours or so. Okay, so it's a long process, this thing. But look at it. It's doing a great job. However... I need to move this whole thing, meaning I've got to build it all again. As I've done that part, I need to go that way and then rebuild it again and go that way, then rebuild it again and go that way. So we're only a quarter of the way done. 
Oh gosh. But I'm gonna try and not AFK the next few parts, and instead, each time we finish one section, I'm gonna neaten it up and terraforming it to look a little bit nicer. First though, I've gotta dismantle and rebuild this machine. Oh no, I've just done- I've just messed up. No! So stupid. I didn't realize placing dirt underneath that would blow it up. Oh, stupid, stupid Joel. I guess I also have to go and gather all the materials again as well. Good. Good, good, good. At least I know now for the future. The reason I placed the dirt under the TNT, by the way, is so that I can collect it all. Without it falling into the void like it just did. Now, normally when I do time lapses, every time you see the day count flash one more day, that's around 10 minutes in the overworld. In the end, it's 20 minutes. So what you're seeing here is literal hours passing by as we destroy this end island. Oh gosh, this took such a long time. As you can see, we started on day 1761 and we're approaching day 1800 rather quickly, but it is satisfying watching it destroy the island, although some bits weren't destroyed by the TNT cannons and I had to come in and neaten them up a little bit, which is fine, is fine. It still was a lot quicker than me mining it all out by myself, which I was going to do if I had a beacon. A beacon probably would have been quicker. I wish beacons worked on endstone. Progress! is slow so slow i've been working at this for six days now you can kind of see i've started building it back up here but we still need to destroy all this all this and all this so i'm thinking now we're below these things we might be able to set it up again and then i can dig this out myself which by the way we're up to eighty-two thousand end stone that's that's mad. Back at it, I guess. Don't know why I keep doing this to myself. Last time I went insane in the never. This time I'm going insane in the end. But hey, at least these machines are helping out. If only now there was a flying machine that could help replace the endstone and terraform it. That would be amazing. But instead, I had to do that. And that is it for the endstone. Oh my gosh. We're on day 1822. Let me show you a quick video of the replay mods. This thing took so long. I've been uh, I've been working away at this for about mm, 10 days so far. 10 real life days. Obviously not 10 Minecraft days as it's been nearly 100 of those. And we're finally ready to move on to step 2 which is changing up the terrain. You'll notice the end stone is kind of like jagged around the edges. That's because we're going to be changing the surface of this place. To something a bit nicer. First though, let's fix up our tools and also destroy these flying machines. Oh, it feels good to be back on the surface in the open air. What isn't great though is the fact I need around 7,000 blocks of moss and 6,000 blocks of lime terracotta. I have plenty of cacti for the dye, so that shouldn't be a problem. It's more the moss, as I don't really have a moss farm. Last time it was just me clearing out a hole. I guess we can do that again. First, let's get the terracotta. Wee terracotta, ooh, look at it disappear. Wee lovely, lots of terracotta, lovely, ooh. Not sure why I'm doing that voice, but anyway, I also went and smelted myself a load of cacti and got turning that terracotta into lime terracotta. I also cleared out a load of moss from our moss cave. Ooh, two materials that took quite a while to gather, but it's all we need to go back to the end. Oh gosh, I don't know why I'm saying oh gosh, we're going to be spending a long time there. Let's get placing all this lime terracotta and moss. Now I went for terracotta and moss because they are way greener than how grass looks in the end. I thought I'd mix it up with the terracotta as well as the moss, just to add a bit of texture to the build. And I think it worked out okay. It did add a bit of texture. I did go too crazy and sort of just split them up, as you can see there. And we've got these different patterns forming. Oh, and I also had to destroy an obsidian pillar, which took ages. Ah, lovely. Look at that. The island finally has some shape to it. Very nice indeed. By the way, um, destroying this took 40 minutes just for that obsidian pillar there. Kind of crazy if I was to destroy all of them. It would take quite a long time. Glad I'm not doing that. But this is actually showing the outline of the castle we're going to be building today. Look, you can kind of see where it's going to go. I didn't place grass everywhere as that would be pointless. But we're going to actually work on something not on the island for now. We're going to focus on the outer ring. And for this, we need a lot of materials. Back to the overworld. 
Now, there's two main materials we need for this. And the one we need most of is glass. And I've done the calculations, and we need about 25,000 glass, aka 385 stacks, aka 14.2 shulker boxes worth which is this many shulkers of sand uh, oh gosh it's a good job i've got quite a few bottles of enchanting let's head to the desert oh this takes me back to the empire season one days except i was mining red sand then now i'm mining normal sand we got all the sand we needed though after fixing up our tools and mining this final little section over near our base we also had to get ourselves a load of coal to smelt all this sand. By the way, I really, 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 really need a blaze farm. Or just another way to get fuel because at the moment I'm having to mine coal and that is boring and also probably not very efficient. But oh well, we used the coal to also make some torches, gathered some bamboo as well and some white concrete. And then we AFK'd our raid farm for a little bit just to get enough emeralds to do some trading with our villagers for some bottles of enchanting. And also I wanted to level them all up for something a little later on. And then finally we went and collected ourselves a load of of skulk from down below near the deep dark and with that skulk collected we have all we need for the outer section of this build oh my gosh we're approaching day 1900 and this is the big first thing we've built it's a good thing though i promise let's hope these all fit in my inventory let's head back to the end where we are going to spend a long time building and we're going to start out with the outer outer rings yes there's lots of rings i'm playing it really safe this time by having a lot of rockets in my inventory because i don't want to just like fall out of the world and not be able to land again if i run out of rockets i pretty much die then but let's get our second building time lapse uh-oh, alarm bells are ringing. Joel hasn't gone straight into the time lapse. What's happened? Well, let me explain. I was, you know, just fixing my tools at my farm over there. And we had a power cut in our area. And of course, my PC was on because I was playing some Minecraft. And everything went off in our house, including the PC. I turned it back on and I couldn't log into this world. Now, of course, I'm not stupid. I make backups. However, my last backup was two weeks ago before we started this video. But using some behind the scenes magic, I managed to get the world and save that fine. However, my player data was completely wiped, meaning I got the world back, but all my statistics, all my tools and items, all the things inside of my ender chest were completely gone. Also, weirdly enough, all my controls have reset as well, so I, I can't zoom anymore now because of all these weird things messing with them. So, how did I fix this? Because I'm still wearing a pumpkin, I still have all my stuff, and if I open my ender chest, everything is there. Well, I managed to back up all the stuff in my ender chest from a save I had two weeks ago, which which was my emergency backup. However, a lot of the stuff, like my fireworks and some other things, such as these tools, may have different durabilities, and uh, there might be some things like some bottles of enchantment which aren't meant to be here, I'm not sure. Because this is from two weeks ago, and obviously I've been playing for two weeks since then, a lot has changed in that ender chest. The main thing that has changed though, which is very upsetting to me, is all my statistics. These are all missing around 160 days worth of stuff, including all that end stone I mined, all the sand I just gathered, is no longer appearing on these statistics, even the ender dragons killed. It only says one ender dragon killed and the time played. But And I could go and change it, but I don't want to like fake it in a way. I did, however, set the day forward. So the day is accurate. We are on 1873. But if you're wondering why my statistics are being a bit weird, it's because we crashed. And that makes me very sad because I mined 100,000 blocks of end stone nearly. And now I don't even have the statistics to show it. I guess we're going to have to mine 100 more. Let's get to work. No, I'm only joking. But I just wanted to be transparent with you guys. There is some stuff that has happened and it is very annoying. But luckily, we've managed to recover pretty well. And thank goodness, it was after I put all these shulker boxes down that we crashed. Meaning... These shulker boxes here and all the materials we just gathered are safe, thank goodness. So let's have a quick two seconds of silence for the end stone statistic disappearing. 
Okay, good. Let's get back to work and let's be serious now. Serious, because we have to place a lot of things down. All that glass we gathered is about to be placed down. Now, you're looking at this and you're thinking, Joel, you're placing that down really easily. Well, that's because I'm using a mod called Lightmatica, which I always use for its schematics. And it has this method called Easy Place, where you can place stuff and you don't have to place loads of dirt. So I use that to help me out after my stressful situation of, you know, uh, nearly losing my entire world. Here you can see, though, all that glass we gathered being placed down. This took around three hours or so, I believe, to finish it all off. But look, we finally started building some stuff that isn't end stone. And oh boy, I'm loving it. Oh, yes, that's a lot of glass. I know it doesn't really look like much. Uh, when you're up above, but down here you can kind of see how massive this thing is. Oh, I'm still wearing my sequel life skin, but oh well. So what we're going for here is a lovely river effect. This is a river around the island, a circular river, of course, because it just looks cool. And the river is sort of, you know, sparkling. We've got this lovely sort of torch effect underneath I thought was quite cool. And we've also added all these little things around which you can use to go through the end portals. And finally, we have the boat we built, which is, of course, going with the theme we're going to have today. As yes, I think it's probably in the thumbnail and title and elsewhere, but this is the castle from Tang. This is the boat she sits on while she watches the lanterns come from the castle. And next up, we're going to be building a castle. So we can head back to the surface where we'll sleep. And here is all the end stone blocks we had gathered earlier. As you can see, plenty of them there. But we're also going to need a lot more other types of blocks. Let's see how far into the 1900 days these materials take us to gather. And I won't spoil how long it's taken, but keep in mind we started this on day 1884. Remember that at the end when we get to the end. Here you can see me mining a load of red sandstone though. I also went to the nether to collect some warped fungi and some warped nylium, I think it's called. I can't remember. So we could mine ourselves a load of trees there as we need a load of warped wood and warped planks in particular. I also afk my bone mill farm because we're going to be using a lot of wood and I need to be using my wood farm plus also bone milling some trees manually. We started off with our wood farm though and we got our Sell some third wood. I do try and automate stuff when I can because it does just save me so much time. However, you'll see here there's some stuff you just can't automate or I haven't built the farms for automating it yet. We actually had to get loads of birch planks, by the way. That's why I was converting it to birch planks there. We also needed some stripped birch wood, so I actually did that myself as I find it's easier than getting it from the wood farm, then stripping it and placing it, etc. I also had to get myself a load more terracotta, particularly orange terracotta and some white terracotta as well. You'll see me head over here and mine myself a load of white terracotta. We also had to get a load of coal once more to smelt all that sandstone we gathered in the first clip. Obviously, endstone and sandstone have got very similar colors, so we're going to be using both interchangeably in this build to add a bit of different texture. I had to AFK my bone mill farm again so that I could get some more acacia wood as well as some mangrove wood as well. I really wish there was a mangrove wood farm there might be. I think I should build it. I use this wood a lot. We also had to go gather ourselves a load more sand as well and some dye to dye this sand into some concrete and also some glass. We also had to chop down some trees, some spruce trees, collect some gold from our project last time as we needed some gold blocks and also get a load of glowstone and redstone by trading our villagers. One of the more awkward materials to get that we had to get was our bookshelves to make some lecterns. So you can see me here making some paper and using some leather we had from killing cows in the past to make ourselves some books to make into bookshelves to then turn into lecterns. We really need to get ourselves some more librarians so we can trade that in the future. As with the ray farm, which you can see me using here, it is so quick to get emeralds. Also redstone, which is pretty nice for those redstone lamps. As yes, we're using a lot of redstone lamps, as you can see there. But I'm happy to say we're nearly done. All we need to do is get some blaze rods quickly and some granite and also some coral fans. Oh my gosh. We are done. All the materials. Look at them. 33 shulker boxes. 
And we actually have some more because this doesn't include the end stone. And these are all pretty much full apart from this one here, as you can see. So many materials, which we need to now transport to the end, which we're going to have to do two trips for. It's actually 42 shulker boxes, including all this. This is so many materials. Wait, let me do some math quickly. I know not every shulker box is full, but we have... 1134 stacks of materials roughly this this is this is kind of scary how many materials this is oh there's so many different ones as well it's gonna take so long to build but look i'm literally just going through them all just for fun now to see where everything is there's just so many ah, okay let's get the pumpkin head back on make sure we have spare food and rockets and let's get building our biggest build in one video to date. This thing is massive, and I can't wait for you all to see it. Time lapse in three, two, one, go. Now, I can already see this is one of my longest hardcore videos we've made so far, and there's a good reason why. Look at those days ticking by, each one being 20 minutes, because yes, this build took nearly 10 and a half hours to put together. Insane. That's just the castle as well. I'm not sure how long this whole thing has taken if we include all the other stuff as well. I'm guessing it's close to the 100 hours range if we include the designing of the castle and the island itself. But oh boy, is it worth it when you see the final product. Here you can see me building up the walls and we actually modeled this off the castle from Tangled, except there was a toy version I found, which had a really good 360 view. So I use that. So it's probably not exactly like the one in the movie. But if I put a picture of the toy one up on the screen now, you can kind of see what I was going for. It is very similar to this toy. And it uses so many different types of blocks. Most of the time was spent of me just flying back to my ender chest to get different blocks because I'd walk over there to build some stuff and I'd just have missed one block. I used so many rockets on this thing. It took absolutely ages. But here is the main structure built, so it's time to add the lanterns. And at last, I see the lights. Look at it. Look at them appear. I used some easy place mode to help with this, by the way, because, oh my gosh, it was going to take so long. But even though all the lanterns are now in and looking amazing, we're still not done as we wanted to add in some flowers, some rocks, some bushes around the bottom. And I looked at it and I thought, you know what? That's still not enough. So I went back to the overworld, collected for myself a load of spruce wood and some leaves. And then we got building some trees in this place to give it a bit more depth and, you know, make it look a bit more interesting because it looked really empty on the island itself. But oh my gosh we're done and over 250 days later it is done look at it i'm not showing it so you can't look at it but look at it Whoa. let's get a zoomed in view wow look at it oh my gosh i am so happy with it look at it it looks amazing i wish i could play the copyright music with all the lanterns going over but I can't. So instead, here's some singing and some shaders and some cinematic shots. Please forgive me. And at last I see the light. And it's like the fog has lifted. And at last I see the light. And it's like the sky is new. And it's warm and real. Okay, that's enough of that. Shaders don't really work too well on this build, I find, because of all the dark spots. But it kind of looks really cool with the lanterns, especially as the glass kind of goes sort of like glowy and invisible, meaning that the lanterns actually look like lanterns you'd let into the sky. I really, really like the effect the shaders had. Also, look at this. This looks so cool with shaders. Oh my gosh. By the way, here are all the replay mod files of me building it, and that's not including the trees. Now, this is the longest I spent on any project in this world, but I am so happy with it. Look at it. Look how cool it looks. It makes it coming to the end a little bit nicer, Although I still hate coming to the end because it's boring. There's nothing to do here other than build. It's also really hard to get the scale of this thing down. But if you get up close and personal, you can see it's kind of crazy. It's really, really big. And I probably could have added more detail in these courtyards around a little bit. But you know what? 
it's just to make my end island look a bit better. And I think I've done a job. I've done a good job there. Anyway, it's time we got to work. And I mean business today, baby. I'm not addressing you as baby, by the way. Uh, that's weird. The only, I don't call anyone baby, not even my wife. Although I do call a babe. Anyway, moving on. The first thing we're building today is long overdue. And it is, of course, a slime farm. Now, like every farm I build, I'm following a tutorial because I'm stupid and can't come up with these ideas myself. And this one is by someone called Day6. And we need a lot of materials. They are glass, fence gates, scaffolding, campfires, fences, iron blocks, carved pumpkins, pressure plates, torches, hoppers, trap doors, a load of chests, a load of building blocks, some stairs, a load of slabs, some dirt slash grass. And that is everything except for one material. I need 19 and a half stacks of brown mushrooms. Oh my gosh. I have 42. Right. I need an axe with fortune on it. So let's make a diamond axe. And let's see if we can get fortune. Silk touch won't do. No luck, but I can buy two fortune two bucks here. Put on a mending, an efficiency, and a fortune. And voila! Hopefully this works. Lovely. Now, I tried to grow loads of these at once, but it wouldn't work. So here's me bone milling the same mushroom over and over and over. And 30 minutes of chopping mushrooms later. There we go. And that is everything. You probably don't care, but another thing I've just done is rearrange all of my ender chest and put everything into some shulkers that I need. But let's head to the swamp where we will be building this farm. Weirdly, there's still slimes here from when I was hunting them before. The slime farm is working. So first First, we gotta clear some space. Mainly, we've just gotta get rid of all these trees and some dirt and grass. And now, I'll build the rest of the farm and won't explain anything to you because I'm following a tutorial. It'll be in the description. And this thing took quite a while to build, mainly because I had to clear out quite a lot of space again. I used a beacon to speed it up, of course, but it still took a decent amount of time. But you can see the basics are we're making these four killing chambers with some iron golems to lure them in, and then inside we're placing mushrooms so only slimes can spawn because slimes can spawn on mushrooms apparently and then at the top we're making an afk chamber and lighting up the area around it and we also afk'd and oh my gosh i didn't even realize what day we are ending this on let's have a look at that f3 menu day 2000 2000 days on this world that's kind of crazy. That's my new record for any single player by a long shot. But anyway, how's the slime farm getting on? Ooh. Let me gather it all. So we've earned 15 minutes of AFK and we've got nearly 17 stacks, which equates to, oh boy, nearly two stacks of blocks. That is so good. Oh, and oh, wait. Oh, and I actually missed some. What the heck? There's so much. Actually, well over two stacks. Lovely. And I've actually collected all the grass and the dirt we got from clearing out that hole there, as we will be using that very shortly. But let's head home. On day 2000, I can't believe it's day 2000. I keep pressing F3 and looking at the number. It makes me so happy. And as fun as it is to look at all the stuff we built in these 2000 days, we're not going to waste day 2000 just doing nothing. Oh, no, no. We're going to get started with our next big project, which requires a lot of terraforming. A, a lot of terraforming. A lot, okay? And we've got all this grass and dirt here and a little bit more in the chest over there. Let's see how far it gets us, shall we? As we're going to go straight into a day 2000 time lapse. Now I have a love and hate relationship with terraforming. I love how it looks. It can really make builds look so much better, but I hate placing grass. Oh my gosh, it's so boring. Our grass and dirt supply is getting rather low. As you can see, we're all out of grass and we've got a little bit of dirt left and quite a bit more to do. So I guess we need to go get some grass. Shock, surprise, it's a time lapse of me getting grass, except it's raining and now it's not raining. Hopefully we can finish it with all this stuff. Sometimes Minecraft is weird, isn't it? I've just gone and collected a load of grass and dirt to then place instantly a load of grass and dirt. 
I have fun. I hope you have fun as well watching it. Let's see this next time lapse. Oh yeah, baby. Look at him place that grass. Ooh, it's so grassy. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. We really had to fix this landscape as it was truly quite horrible, especially with all that sand that I've been clearing out before. But we got there in the end and we started making this thing look pretty. Even cleaned up some of the water and just added in some layers and stuff. And on day 2023, which is the year we were recording this, of course, it is not done still. As you can see over there, we've got some lines of where we want to terraform, but we have once again ran out of blocks. Look at all this stuff we've managed to dig up so far. Oh my gosh, this is taking ages. Let's go get some more grass. This time in a fun montage. Guys, you are not going to believe what has happened again. Look at this. Look at this. <sighs> Guess you had another power cut. This is the latest backup I have, by the way. Yay. There was a bit of a storm the other night in the UK, and I was recording that last clip at about 1pm. UK time. And I actually logged out of the world, but for some reason it was still mid-saving the world and then the power cut. Like, bam. Which, by the way, it didn't come back on for nearly 20 hours. It didn't come back on till 10am the next day. So yeah, we're gonna have to try and recover as much as we can. Let's see what we can do. I'm sick of this. How does this keep happening to me? So once again, we've managed to save the world. As you can see, we've done a bit more terraforming since you last saw me. Uh, but of course, all our stuff, like our things in our ender chest, have gone back so far. So all the stuff I just organized, Oh, I am so annoyed. Basically, what keeps happening during these power cuts is my player data gets corrupted. Here on the left is a normal player data, and here on the right is my player data. As you can see, everything is missing. But everything in the world itself, like our grass blocks, etc., are still here. We did lose quite a few grass blocks from our inventory, but I'm not going to cheat those in. Instead, I'm just going to use up these ones we have left. I am very annoyed, though. I am very annoyed that this has happened again. Since we've moved to our new house, we haven't had a single power cut in two years. And now we've had two in two months. And both have been, well, I've had my hardcore world open. What are the chances? I hate it so much. Oh, well, hopefully this time lapse works and I don't get another power cut. If I do, I'm quitting Minecraft forever. And just so you all know, I bought a mini backup generator to plug my PC into. So this should never happen again. If we have a power cut, that should kick in. I've just finished collecting this grass and I've just realized the statistics are still all wrong. It says 40,000 grass. I'm pretty sure this was up to like 70,000. I've lost so many again. Why is it always after I farm a load of stuff? Oh dear. Anyway, let's go finish this stupid terraforming and this stupid video in this stupid world which is making me angry because of how stupid it is that the power keeps stupidly cutting out. I'm not angry. I am angry. Why am I saying I'm not angry? I am. Anyway, I'm gonna place grass angrily. Here's some angry music while I place this grass angrily. Huff. Puff. Ugh. Huff. Puff. I'm so angry. I'm gonna show up now. I'm not actually that angry, but I am just a little bit annoyed. I'm actually recording this voiceover days later. As you can see, my voice is really gone. Now we've spent around 50 days on this, which doesn't look like a lot, to be honest. But this is tricky work. I don't know why, but placing grass and dirt and organizing all this has taken a very long time. It's a lot of blocks. And at the moment, it kind of doesn't make sense. There's a lot of holes everywhere. There's just random stuff. It will all make sense shortly, okay? It's going to be beautiful. As this will all be leading up to something over here, which we're not going to build today. Instead, that'll be for next video, where we're going to do something massive once again. Today, though, we're working on this, which is some farmland. I'm going to spoil it. I don't know why I've been trying not to spoil it. We're going to have a house. We're going to have some fields of wheat, as we do have some fields of wheat over there. But I just think fields of wheat and flowers look so nice. And these flowers over here look amazing. And I think if this whole area was just wheat fields, that would look so cool. So we're going to start with the fields, as we have some other stuff we're going to build around here. But the fields of wheat will be the first thing. 
And for the fields of wheat, we need a lot of stuff. Also, I've said fields of wheat way too many times. So, uh, yeah, let's go get the stuff we need for the fields of wheat. 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 I'll shut up now. 11 minutes into the episode, and this is our first material gathering montage. Joel, what the heck is wrong with you? You're rubbish. You can't even gather materials as much as you used to anymore. Why am I saying this? I don't know what I'm saying. Anyway, here I go, placing all those birch leaves I just gathered to make some outlines for these fields of wheat. But there's also other fields in there as well. Oh, is there? There is. Okay, that was the easy part. Now we've got to actually hoe all these fields. Okay. We're probably going to have to fix this at some point, but let's get hoeing. Placing those bushes was a blast. I actually really enjoyed placing the birch bushes. Hoeing all this ground. Oh my gosh, it takes so long. Look at this here. The days are passing by. Actually, it's still only been one day. It's not actually taken as long as I thought, but I had to place so much water, hoe so much land, and it did actually end up taking about an hour or so to do all this and we still haven't planted the wheat this is literally just hoeing all the grass which yeah it, it's a lot of grass it's a lot of hoeing but i'm happy with it it, it, it looks cool on the time lapse at least that is a lot of fields guess we're gonna need a lot of seeds and there is a reason for this by the way and that is because i like to build with packed mud and of course with packed mud you need wheat so i'm making sure i have plenty of wheat. For gathering all this wheat, I use my fortune hoe to get the most seeds possible. I think that's how that works. I don't know though. We got two sugar boxes of seeds plus some extra. Will it fill all these fields? Oh gosh. And how can I make this time lapse different to the other time lapses of me just hoeing the fields? Well, let me tell you right now, Joel, you're about to come up with something really creative. You're going to do this. What are you going to do? Please tell me, because I've not really thought of it yet. Future Joel's problem. I'm going to unplanned rhyme every word, because that is the curd of the way that makes cheese in the hay bales. I am terrible at this. Oh my gosh, two shulker boxes didn't finish it off. We've still got so much more to do. What? That's 54 stacks of seeds. It wasn't enough. <sighs> let's go get more. And this one here is going to be way more fun. So, cue the music. Let's go. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to do some ad libs. Just throw them in there. Oh, yeah, baby. Ooh. DJ. Smallish beans. Get it. Oh, we're done. Okay, that's the end. Cool. Oh, yes, we are done with our fields of wheat. Oh, my gosh. Some of it's starting to grow as well now. I would go frolic through these fields of wheat, but I don't want to accidentally stand on some. Also, fun fact, wheat is now my third most used block, meaning I've planted 25,000 seeds. But I'm really happy with these. I think these are going to look really cool. But we're going to move on really quickly to something completely different. And no, we're not done with that yet. Okay, we're not done. But so far... I've got two wood farms in this world. We've got this one, which can do spruce, oak, and birch. And we've got this one here, which can do dark oak. But one of the woods we use the most is mangrove. Look, there's some over there. There's some over there. There's some there. And mangrove is one of the most annoying blocks to farm in the game. So I'm going to make a mangrove wood farm today. However, a lot of farms are very ugly, so I like to cover them up with buildings. And this one is massive. So we're going to have to dig it into the ground. And I was thinking just over here would be quite good because it's where I like chop some wood anyway. And it's quite close to the bone mill farm, which I can hopefully run at the same time. So yeah, let's build it just over here. So I've marked out a square here and we are currently at Y101. We need to get down to Y53. Oh dear. It's going to be a lot of digging. So to make this entertaining, I'm going to think of many hole-related puns. And we're going to throw them in right now. Good luck, Joel, because I can only think of one right now. And it's praying to the Holy Lord. <laughs> okay, let's get started. Oh, as a Minecraft creator of content, I uh, have a bit of a pit in my stomach as I'm trying to get out the trenches and think of some hole-related pun, pun, puns, puns, puns. Ah! Okay, let's ditch the puns now as they're getting pretty hollow. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But we do need to build 
the rest of the farm right now, which we need a lot of materials for. Do we have them all, Mr. Chess System? Turns out the answer is yes. Look at all this lovely stuff. Very nice. And we're going to be following a Shulker Craft tutorial today for this thing. Uh, and we're not going to be decorating the outside today either. I just want to get this thing up and running so we can build some more stuff over there. Let's see if we can get it to work. I'm scared as I think this farm can mess up. Anything with TNT cannons scares me. But while we build, Joel will tell you his favourite facts about mangrove trees, won't you, Joel? You have to now. I've said it in the video and I'm not going to re-record this clip. Good luck. Yes, Joel, here are seven fascinating facts about mangroves that I am bringing out of my brain and definitely not reading off Google, such as mangroves are some of the most important carbon sinks on the planet. Wow. And uh, mangroves are found in salty water. Ooh, salty. And mangroves can help mitigate coral bleaching. What does that mean? And mangroves contribute back to the economy and society. What, do they like pay taxes or something? What? All right, all that AFKing done. Let's load this thing up with some bone meal. Gosh, I hope this works. Four shulkers of bone meal in here, roughly. Let's get some mangrove propagals. And I've just remembered I forgot to build the collection system slash bone meal making thing, which we're gonna do now. It won't take long. In fact, let me walk into this wall here. And when we turn around, and it is done. Oh, isn't that great? What a lovely transition. So this is a basic dispenser. It'll dispense out all the stuff into this water stream. And then we collect ourselves some sticks or mangrove logs. And all the other stuff will go into these composters here. But I think we're finally ready to start this farm. Let's turn it on. TNT should start falling from the top now. It is good. Okay. Let's get in position, which I believe is we stand here and then we aim at this stair like this. There we go. We planted our first sapling. Now we just hold right click and it should. There, look, it's blowing stuff up. It looks like the logs land on us. So once our inventory fills up, it'll go into the sorting system. Let's get okay for like 10 minutes, see what happens. All right, that is 10 minutes up does seem to leave a little bit of stuff. So one problem I've noticed is I started with, what was it, like 48 mangrove pumpkins. I've got 20 left, which is not good. Also, I'm pretty sure I picked up pretty much everything. We've got nine in there, although those have filled up with 41 now. Well, one of them has. We've got some sticks. We've got no bone mill, but our inventory's full of stuff. Let's put it all in here. So 10 minutes for over five stacks of mangrove. That's pretty good. Also a load of sticks, but like I said, the propagul thing is going to be an issue. But at least it works. So there we go. We have a mangrove wood farm now. Very nice. I think that is definitely going to be quicker in the long run. Also, it gave us a load of stone and other goodies to play with. But it's time to head back to the main project of today. And on this spot right here, we're going to be building a lovely farmhouse. Ooh. But before we can build a farmhouse, we need materials, baby. Yeah, listen to the pumping music playing. I'm hyped and I'm definitely not still sick and feeling terrible. And that's why my voice sounds weird. But let's get all these materials in Minecraft because it's what I love to do. I actually do like doing this. It's quite fun and quite nice because I just watch a movie. I was watching Cars, the movie, during this one. Here's a fun fact. Is it the medication going to my head and I'm getting a bit weird? I don't know. But anyway, let's build this farmhouse. Ooh, look at it. It's a farmhouse. I, I don't know what this was modeled after. I just sort of made it up and I thought it looked kind of cool. I made sure to use mangrove though. And as day 2100 comes to a close, we are done. Let's have a sleep in one of these beds here. As yes, I have decorated the inside a little bit, as you can see. The plan is we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight villagers in this place. We put eight composters as well, as you can see scattered around. All we have to do is make sure that they can't get out, which they can't. And we'll have eight farmers to trade with. Very nice indeed. Functional as well as looking pretty cool and also look the wheat fields are pretty much all grown apart from a few that were just out of render distance over here but they're looking magnificent look at those Woohoo! but let's give a chance for these to grow in shall we by building a big old barn right here 
Quickly, Joel, go get those materials. Starting out with some dark oak wood as we had run out dark oak saplings to use our dark oak wood farm. We also got some mud bricks and then we went back to our mangrove farm for a little bit until this happened. What on earth? There's a bee blocking my farm. How did it even get down here? Stupid bee. Anyway, that should hopefully be enough. Anyway, we got stripping our mangrove wood and then we also collected some oak leaves and then we got building our barn. As you can see, it's made out of mangrove. That's the kind of theme of this episode. It's why I built the mangrove farms, so that I could have loads of mangrove builds in the future and not have to worry about chopping down those stupid trees. I also added a field in the background. Lovely. Ah, lovely. It is done. A very nice barn where we are, of course, going to have some animals. By the way, if my voice sounds different slash weird for all these clips, it's because I've been ill and I've been recording this over like four weeks now. It's taken a long time. Anyway, because my voice is being weird, we're just going to finish everything else off. I think I have pretty much every material I need. So let's go gather them and let's do one final massive time lapse. I actually lied to you right there. There's two time lapses. You gullible idiots thought that I was only going to do one time lapse. You idiots. You morons. I'm sorry. I don't know where, where this is coming from. I just like calling people idiots sometimes. I don't think any of you are idiots. Maybe you are idiots. Let me know how you did in your exams. Do you have exams this time of year? I'm 30 years old. I don't know where exams are anymore. Anyway, look, I added some animals to the fields. That took a long time because they take ages to breed up the stupid idiots. I'm doing it again. Oh, my voice is going. I'm really like ill and stuff, guys. Anyway, look, here's me placing some grass at the end here. As we had to get some villagers into that house, like I said earlier. I went and destroyed all this wheat field, which I fixed later, by the way. Don't worry, I'm not a blooming anti wheat field person. I don't know what I'm saying again. But villagers, my gosh, are these annoying. I needed some farming villagers so I could start breeding them up in my house. And I went for these two guys because they were the nearest by, and I don't really use them. They were just there for decoration. Whereas I will use these ones. But look, we got them in the house, and now we got the other one in the house as well. Completely destroyed my wheat field, by the way. Oh my gosh, it took quite a while to fix. But after that, we managed to break all the blocks and collect all our rails again. Traded some bread with one of them and got breeding them up as we're going to have all our farmers for trading our golden carrots in this building right here lovely well would you look at this this place is looking so good look at it look at me walking through these fields of wheat these fields of sheep speaking of which come here my lovelies breed up breed up for me thank you i think from above this place looks kind of cool but I think it's when you're coming in down low, like from over here, where it just looks amazing. I'm really, really happy with this area. This is meant to just be like a sort of mainly aesthetic, fun area where it just looks nice and you can just walk through and it's just Minecraft. It just makes you feel happy. It's meant to be somewhere that takes you to here, which is where I'll be working next time on that probably our biggest project yet. Oh gosh, I'm going to go start planning that right now. Make sure to leave a like and comment, subscribe if you're new, and I shall see you another time for another hardcore Minecraft video. Good. Bye.